If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this motherfucking episode of Mind <laughs> Pump. Whoa. 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 Just scare everybody. Yeah. We have a lot of people that are just dropping in today, man. Yeah, what sorry. do you have to say to those people? So, uh, what do you have our, to say with them, Sal? During our 58-minute introductory conversation that includes a lot of current events, we talked about the Black Panther movie. That's right. Yeah. It was really good. Can white people go see it yet? <laughs> I think you can. I, I think, think you we should. Can. Let's do this. Then we talk about Netflix Dirty Money series. Mm. Mm, we got to love that Dirty Money. Good series. We talk about passive aggressive mothers. <laughs> <laughs> do we all have one? I, uh, I'm pretty sure that's a common uh, uh, thing. I love my mom a lot. Yeah, me too. Uh, we talk Shout about out, the, the new Diet Coke that is now flavored with. Ace K. Is That's this, right. Drop the aspartame for some Ace K. Is this artificial sweetener better than the old one? <laughs> or will they, they give you find this chemical? Or are you gonna get more cancer? Uh, then the next thing we talked about the grenade throwing fail. What <laughs> a pathetic bunch of men. I'm, embo- I'm embarrassed. Uh, I, I, I can't even. I'm embarrassed. I can't even. Uh, we talked about guy, a guy cementing his head in a microwave. <laughs> yeah. And other idiots, stupid attention game. Obviously, antics. a friend of Justin's. Yeah. And then after we're having fun, we get serious and we talk about gun control. That's not a very divisive topic. I'm sure it's pretty. It's pretty. God, did, how, did we be tra- super smooth? How well? I'm curious to see our transition on that. Did we yeah. transition that over? I, well? No, that doesn't no sound like it right. works. Right, guys. Cements, it. cements head in microwave. Oh, by the way, did you guys see the shooting in the school oh, yesterday? Terrible. Yeah. yeah terrible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we get into the questions. The first question was. Is FRC, which stands for, what is it, Justin? Functional Range Conditioning. Is that the future of fitness? We recently had them uh, conduct a certification here. 88 trainers Pump, in here, man. At Mind Pump Media Facilities, and people are loving it. Is it the future, or is it just an awesome tool? The next question was about uh, helping a woman get her, her body back. She did extreme dieting, extreme diet prep. Hormones are out of whack, lost her period. Her body's just holding on to body fat. Like, what is the strategy to getting her body back to normal so she can get lean again? The next question was, what are good substitute exercises for deadlifts and barbell squats? If there is such a thing, how can you substitute for those two movements? And finally, uh, probably our most deep and uh, scientific, science-based question we've had <laughs> in a long time. Deep indeed. A very difficult question to answer, except for Adam. He had no problem answering this. Yeah. Where's the weirdest place we've all gotten head? Yeah. That's oh, wow. It. Uh, we did all, go there. Yeah. You know what? Fellatio. Also, I think it's important in this episode, uh, not, uh, you know, not to transition from the weird head question, but we did talk a lot about, in the deadlifts and the squat question, we discussed a lot about Prime and Prime Pro, mm-hmm. and those of you that are listening that struggle with squatting or deadlifting, not replacing that with you know leg press or leg extensions or other machine type exercise instead of doing that, getting to the root cause of why you have a hard time squatting or deadlifting, and that is the exact reason why we built Prime and Prime Pro. So if you do not have that get those programs and keep telling people you have a fucking 30 day money back guarantee if you apply what we've taught people in this and you're somebody who can't deadlift or squat you can get your money back if it doesn't work miracles for you after following it for 30 days that's right uh oh and we also mentioned our sponsors uh we mentioned organifi we talked about their cacao bliss and their gold juice if you go to organifyshop.com enter the code mind pump you'll get a discount and then we also mentioned Thrive Market, our other sponsor, uh, they're a company that sell non-GMO and organic products, food and skin products and herbs and much more. Um, if you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump and enter the code mind pump, you're going to get a free month uh, membership, $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more and free shipping. Also, uh, so we just launched Maps Hit. This is our new MAPS program that is 100% designed specifically with this in mind. How do we burn the most amount of body fat in a short period of time? It's a six-week program designed to burn the most amount of body fat. Now, I want to say this. You need to have at least moderate conditioning, and you should not have metabolic damage going into this because it is a very intense calorie-burning workout. But if you don't fall into those categories... 
go and try the program out. And then for the rest of you, we have awesome fitness bundles that combine our MAPS programs and discount them. Those are also available at mindpumpmedia.com. And if you just have any questions, you want to learn about any of those programs, and you're ready and serious about getting in shape and you want expert exercise programming, again, the place to go is mindpumpmedia.com. It's t-shirt time. T-shirt time. Whoa. Roll it out. <laughs> Whoa. 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 You almost Adam, lost your voice there, went through puberty. <laughs> the glass just broke. Yeah. Hey, how many we got? <laughs> Ten. <laughs> ten reviews? Uh, it's gone down. It's gone down. <laughs> ten reviews. Ten reviews? <laughs> oh, shit. If there's ever oh, an, if there's ever an emergency yeah. Yeah. and Adam needs to scream, <laughs> he's so fucked. We're fucked, fucked yeah. bro. Just so it doesn't happen. Oh, there's, a, there's a fire? Yeah. Fire? Fire? <laughs> I don't have that fu- I, can, I can't drop it there. Can I can't yell? get up that high, dude. I can't, I can't get up that high. <laughs> it doesn't right. work. So uh, ten reviews, dude. Yeah, right, ten, ten. ten reviews. That's up there with our lowest right there. I yeah, don't, it is. I don't think we're not telling people. I think yeah. it's time to tell people how to get over there. All right, yeah. here's what you do. You go to your, your podcast app, click on it. You got to do that first. You got to go to the purple one. And then you got to search for Mind Pump, even if you already subscribed. That's search the key for right there is I think people that have already subscribed think that you can just go click back on the app. You cannot do that. You have to pretend like you've never yeah. heard of Mind Pump. First time you're and looking go for to us. search. And then when you go to search, that's when you guys put in Mind Pump. Yep. And then you click on the icon and right. then go to reviews. Leave us a review if it's five star. And if we pick it, You'll get a free T-shirt, and now we're giving. Well, after away. you click on Mind Pump, it'll come up. You actually have to scroll down a little bit, and then you'll see where there shows our reviews. We have, I think we have two thousand three hundred something reviews, and then it'll say write a review right there, and that's where you click that's where and you write do a it. review. So that's how you win a shirt. Yeah, exactly. So we're giving out three shirts. We're giving one to Jeff <coughs> Polizaro. Thunderball04, Greer Skin. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Winner, winners. Do you know what I watched this weekend? Hmm. Black Panther. Oh, oh yeah. They were they're letting white people in yet? They did. Oh, they did. They I heard did. on the I heard on the radio it's like I remember I'm you gotta forget you don't forget. Yeah, I'm, you you mix I'm in Sicilian. Okay. Justin can't go watch I it. No, yeah. I, I, I gotta have, wait another week. I'm lucky like Sicilian or you know, like darker Mediterranean people in particular Sicilian and, and I know this because one of my very, very good friends uh years ago was was black and his mom actually told me this. She goes, I go over to his house, we walk in, and his mom looks at me and she goes, He's not white. And, and then my friend goes, what do you mean he's not white? And she goes, he ain't white. And she goes, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, my family's uh, Sicilian. She goes, oh, you're just like us. And then she's like, <laughs> walked off. And so I'm like, oh, shit, I can, I can, hang, I can I, hang out with him. I heard it was awesome. Is it great? It was uh, It was good. It, was, it wasn't as great as people said oh, okay. it was, but it was good. Uh, I, I love the guy that plays Black Panther. I think he did a fucking great job. Uh, do you guys know the story? Of Black Panther, the comic book. I used to have a lot of the comic books. I'm, I don't know the origin story, though. Like, So I, I'm not like super privy on it, but I know a little bit. So at the time when Stan Lee wrote Black Panther, there were no like other big, you know, minority superheroes. It was like a big deal. Yeah. And he did it at a time when it was like a big gamble. Like nobody, it wasn't like, every, like now, everybody does it now, I think, because they think that that element's going to actually give them more popularity. You know what I mean? Like, like let's do this, and because it's you know more minorities than maybe. But back then, it was a huge risk, but he did it anyway, and it had huge you know uh, fan appeal, of course, because you know if you're a black kid growing up in the '60s and '70s, like, and oh yeah, you, you want to read comic for books, that superhero, yeah. to identify with. So, yeah. and then of course, on top of it, it was a good story. It was a good comic book. It wasn't just a, you know it wasn't shitty. It was really really well made. And then they called it the Black Panther. And then at that time, you had the 1966 was when it came out. At that time, you had the Black Panthers coming out, yeah. uh, and you know they were like a like a political you know kind of fringe movement or group or whatever. And there was pressure to change the name, but uh, they didn't because everybody was cool with it. Everybody liked it, hmm. so it's kind of really cool. But it was a good movie. There were definitely some some racial undertones in there, like. I mean, I'm not going to ruin the story for you, but uh, you know, w- uh, Wakala, I think is it. Oh, no, Wakanda is the is the place he's from, right in Africa. That's where they get all the technology and stuff. Uh-huh. And uh, like the bad guys want Wakanda to go to war with the the colonizers, aka European white people, to 
to defeat them on behalf of all the oppressed, you know, minorities or whatever. So there's that kind of racial undertone, which is a, which is today is very, hmm. you know, interesting, a right? A little yeah. bit, yeah. So, but the, but and, and that's that's cool. That's today, right? What's going on today? You Did know? you go watch that yeah. yesterday? Watch it with my kids. I, you know, I Katrina and I binge watched the the Dirty Money series. You kept telling, you texted us like twice. What is that about? Yeah, no, it's really good. It's really good. Um, although I will say, by the last episode, I was a little let down because it. it, it I, I feel like documentaries. As much as I love to watch documentaries, I mean everything has a bias, right? Mm-hmm. So you definitely felt the anti-Trump campaign behind it oh, yeah. towards the end, and there was hints of it in the middle of it. Mm. So, so more more towards him, and not in general. Right, words. right. That and, and they, I mean, the whole last, the so they, there was, I think, six or six. Did you watch all of them, Justin? No, I just made it through like mainly the VW stuff in the beginning. Which, so is this that about was money? It was really, a, yeah, interesting. Is yeah, this the, about money and politics or just corruption? So, and, so do you know? Oh, so the history of VW goes all the way back to Hitler. Oh yeah, he uh-huh. started it. That's yeah. a VW is the people's yeah. wagon, mm-hmm. right? So they 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 dove into VW, which I thought that was a very fascinating story. I also thought it was very fascinating too that. Um, uh, VW was the the vehicle of choice to uh, that all the anti um, what's uh, like anti government movement during the the 60s with the, all all the, oh, the yeah. VW vans and them getting out and smoking weed. Yeah, and the like, irony oh, yeah. of that being that right. it was a national. There's a fascist movie. car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That was <laughs> right. its roots. Right, right. So I, I yeah. thought that was pretty. It reminds I, me how like when people ironic. were like, like when people are like. You know, they, they're like, I'm for equality of you know everyone and minorities and gays, and they wear a Che Guevara, Guevara shirt. Yeah, like the guy hated yeah. blacks and. But gays. this is a lot of this. <laughs> what was yeah. cool about the VW story is, you, did you hear about the corruption? I mean, this is just 2015. Where, what yeah, happened? It was very oh, recent. Is this what? now? I didn't watch it, but does it? Uh, but I remember uh, there was something about them clean diesel. Yeah, like lying or changing yeah, it. Bro, so they passed. They created a little. Uh, you know, they hacked the system so that when they did the test, test indoors, it would register as right. like under the levels, but actually outside, it was grossly forty times grossly polluting. Yeah, it was forty times the the amount you were allowed to have in there, and they they revived the company off of that cheating. I mean, they cheated that mm-hmm. way to get into the U.S. And so they were probably yeah, getting killed in our market. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, that was. Yeah, that I thought that was pretty wild. They had a couple good episodes. I mean, it was really good. So I recommend it to people. I think it's a really good series. But I also did feel the um, the anti Trump feel to it. Mm. And then it was really obvious when the last episode was literally yeah. all about the, Trump. The thing that I that I hate when uh, these these uh, video like documentaries and stuff go into politics is that they'll focus on. It's usually look. The director is usually either, you know, right or he's left, right or she, she, she or he is either right wing or left wing. And so when they make the these documentaries on how bad politics is and how corrupt it is, they'll focus on the bad on the side that they're against. Right. When in reality, it's all the it's all yeah. happening you on have all. To look at every angle. Oh, both sides do right. it. It's it, actually there is no two sides. That's a no. big, that's a big illusion. It's all well, it's, and it's one. It's two sides of the same coin. And I don't mind it. I don't mind everywhere. it like grazing over those topics because I appreciate that. But you can tell when they're like they're only pulling that out. You know, what I'm saying like mm-hmm. they're like the the intention is to like. They're just, cherry picking. Yeah, and their and their their intention is to destroy one's character by presenting just this information. It's like, okay, uh-huh. well, if you're gonna present all that, you gotta present the good side of what he accomplished and did also too. It's like it was made out to be uh-huh. how corrupt and dirty and he's really uh-huh. not that successful. But the, but the other episodes are not like that. Yeah, the rest of them I thought were really really good. I thought for the most part I, I enjoyed the series. Katrina and I enjoyed the series. It was really I think it's really good. Cool. I'll check it out. That's like right up my alley. I love that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, no, you'll 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 definitely big, dig big it. Kind of and each one is very, very different. So each each, each one of the episode uh, each one of the episodes is totally different. It's funny because you, you talk about cronyism when you you have a when you have a referee in the game that actually plays the game. Then the odds that the players of the game are going to try to get that ref to do what they want oh. are really fucking high. Of course, and they have a lot of money. You yeah. know what I mean? So it tends to tends to happen that way. Man, my uh, no sense. this morning I get. Um, does your do you guys? Is, maybe yours does, Justin. Does your do your parents ever like guilt you? 
All the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> All the time bro. It's, it's built into parents, yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah, it's always it's it's uh, if I haven't been over enough, or I didn't call like some aunt, you know, because of something that was oh. happening, and I'm like, or like somebody from high school that she ran into that I'm supposed to connect with, and I'm like, I don't even know who that is, you know. So, uh, yeah, so I get this message this morning because you know we 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 travel quite a bit. And when we're here, we're here, so we're working. And then when I'm not here, I have a lot of scheduling and stuff to take care of with my kids and the house. And then there's a lot of work that, you know, I personally do outside of here. We all do, right? Because we have the forum and we have social media and, you know, all these other things that we're, we're doing. And then on top of it, my kids and the schedule. So it's just, it's a, it's like, a, it's a spread thing. It's not a bad thing. It's all good stuff, but it's just, I have no time, right? So I don't. I can go through a, I can go through a whole week without like going and seeing my parents, especially if they're not watching my kids. Now, if they watch my kids, by default, I'll see them because I'll go pick them right. the kids. Oh, and I'll hang out. With I them. Already know where the guilt is. So, uh, so, so <laughs> because of that, I'm you know my mom's like, you know, because she's like, you know, I know I love watching the kids. I love spending uh, time with them, and I know, uh-huh. you know, but I feel like you only see us, you know, when we have the kids, and we'd love to see your face and. You know, your father and I are not getting any younger and da da da, da. <laughs> I mean, yeah. just going down the... Like, she might as well be like, we're going to die one day and then you're going to feel sorry for... <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, super like, good. Oh, mom. And I have the best parents in the world. They're so loving. And my mom is such a wonderful mom. But my mom is the... She's a black belt of... Uh, passive aggressive ninja. Maybe yeah. that's where like, you, you, know you know what? Maybe that's where <laughs> mine and your, your skill set yeah. came from. Did I ever tell you the story that when Mark and I were driving in my truck? And uh, this was back when uh, OnStar just came out. So I had the OnStar on, and I'm talking to my mom on the in the truck like that, and he's sitting in the, the seat next to me, and he's listening to the conversation. And when we hang up the phone, he starts laughing, and he's like, this is where you get it from. And I'm like, huh? I totally was oblivious to it, right? Yeah. It's just how I converse with my mom. But my mom can be so passive-aggressive <sighs> and be the super guilt tripper yeah. that to navigate around that, you know, I've been doing that since I was a child, so it's just – it's really taught me the art of communication. So you talk about, you know, the things <laughs> yeah. that yeah. you're through you're, necessity, right through necessity. It was like, if I wanted to get anything done or I didn't want to get railed by my mom or felt, get, make her, her or let her make me feel guilty about something. I had to really learn to communicate around that. And so he actually heard that and he starts laughing. He's like, I always wondered where you got it from. You know saying? You just came out of nowhere. <laughs> I got to the point now. I'm at the point now where she'll do something or a little bit like that. And, I'll just call it out. I'll be like, are you trying to say this? Yeah. Like, if that's what you're trying to say, like, we can discuss this. And then she'll deny it, deny it, deny it, and then we're done. And I just keep doing that because I think if you're afraid of saying something straight to someone, so you do it in kind of a little sideways way, where there's no malintent with it. You know, like I said, I love my my mom to death, and she's a great mother. There's no malintent. I think she just, she's learned to do that. And so when I call it out enough times, I figure at some point she's gonna she's just gonna stop, you know. Yeah, yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah, you probably figure. How old am I now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think so, dude. 30, yeah. Uh, Did you guys see the wired. news on the the new line of Coke Zero that's coming out? What new? What's going on? Not Coke Zero. Excuse me, Diet Coke. Their whole new line. Uh, yeah. Um, so there's I mean, this, I've seen the commercials for it. There's a new uh, type of artificial sweetener that I've not I'm not familiar with. Have you heard of Ace K? Uh. Uh-uh. Ace K. Yeah. That's been around for a while. It has. It was approved back in 1988. God, they're so funny. But they're- You know so, why they're doing that? Yeah, because-, because Is this after- actually derived from a plant or is this no, like it's not. chemically So created? This, this is something, look it up. It's called Ace K. It's something that uh, in the past they would pair it with aspartame. And so this holding like So since 2005, Diet Coke sales has been on a, a rapid- uh, decline, so it's lost like three hundred or thirty nine percent in the market space, and last year I think it dropped another one point six or two percent um, since the the previous year in sales, and so you know they're kind of scrambling on okay the, this diet coke was supposed to be the answer to this whole obesity epidemic that we have going on we were supposed to be able to market to people but they couldn't it just goes to show you the consumer is becoming so savvy. And people are weary of this is this is what they do. So what they'll do is uh, people will start to information will come out. Sometimes it's accurate. Sometimes it isn't whatever. So we're not even debating that, although we can debate the the, the potential negatives and benefits or. Whatever. Oh, yeah. It's it's but, very known that, the, that we don't have any proof that this is healthy. Long-term. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not a, well, obviously we don't support artificial sweeteners, but 
that's beside the point. What they'll do is information will come out. The consumer base will say, we don't like artificial sweeteners. Uh-huh. So then what a manufacturer will do is take away the one you recognize and replace yes. it with another one. Yeah, there you go. So aspartame. So it'll say aspartame uh, free. Bad. Uh, okay, so let's let's just use this one. Yeah, so it'll yeah. say aspartame free. And people are like, oh shit, this doesn't have aspartame. This is good. So this happened in the supplement industry already a while ago, long time ago. In the supplement industry, protein powders and stuff, when we were buying them, were sweetened by aspartame. And then aspartame in the fitness industry became demonized uh, a long time ago. I don't know if you guys even remember this, but it was um, we were relatively young. But I remember distinctly, because I've been buying supplements on my own since I was 15 years old, right? I go to the store and whatever. And I remember distinctly going to... God, it was called. Do you guys, have you guys ever been to that supplement store in San Jose, the Beehive or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's like one of the oldest supplement <laughs> or stores. Or by Almond Inn. Yeah, one of the uh, oldest yeah. ones in San Jose, right? So I remember going there at the age of 15 or 16, like riding my bike there to buy protein. And the guy, and I'd say, oh, what protein powder? And the guy would be like, do you want aspartame or aspartame free? And I was like, I, I, don't, I don't, I really don't care. And then there's a lady next to me who was there buying supplements, and she was in. <laughs> She was older, but at the time, let's see, if I was six, she's probably 30, but she looked older than me, right? Because I was a kid. And she's like, oh, no, 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 you don't want aspartame. Aspartame's bad for you, this, that, and the other. It's a bad artificial sweetener. So I said, okay, get me the one without it. And what it had instead was sucralose. So what the supplement industry did a long time ago is replace aspartame with sucralose, although we know sucralose has a negative effect on gut microbiome and all these other things as well. But that's just what they do. So now the mainstream you know, sweetener market is sounds like because if Coke makes that move, <clears throat> then everybody else is going to follow. Oh uh, no, that, that's why I was I was interested because I was not familiar with Ace K. I've never I'd actually never heard anybody market yeah, that, and either. I was not familiar with that at all. Mm-hmm. And it it claims to be two hundred times sweeter than aspartame, so mm-hmm. it's supposed to be a, a super artificial sweetener that Diet Coke is now going to launch. So it'd be interesting to see. They, I think it actually might even be. Dare I say worse than aspartame? Yeah. <laughs> have you seen <laughs> Have you seen the actual ads for it now? Like where they're like, yeah, yeah. So they they highlight. Uh, I drink a diet coke because I can. Do you guys remember? I don't. Was so, it our so, show so, or somebody else's where I brought this up? Like I totally thought that that would be the like I think the future of advertising on shit that's bad is not that these guys will turn their ships, but they'll just call it as it is. Yeah. Like, ah, we don't live YOLO. It'll be more like YOLO will be the, uh, the idea. That's exactly the, the mentality with it because right. even then you, you see, they kind of make fun of somebody who's doing a marathon and wow. like they're jabbing at people like making healthy decisions Dude, it's a, with it, their shit drink. The, the war has begun. Check this out. This is on medical news. This is an actual medical website. So usually medical websites are very safe and kind of like FDA regulated type of stuff. Like, oh, FDA regulated, therefore it's safe. No, it's actually, there's some evidence that long-term exposure causes cancer and definitely not good for pregnant women. So they they may have traded out aspartame for something worse. Something even worse. Ha. Of course. This this scary and sad part is they don't give a fuck. I mean, the strategy is like you said oh, is so big. is to just, you know, play the play the charades game, right? By okay, well now everyone's tired of aspartame. Let's get a name that they've never heard before and that's been approved since nineteen eighty eight. We don't have to worry about it. I, it just strikes me as odd that it's been approved since eighty eight, but nobody else was really using it as much and now all of a sudden we're going to like that in itself should be like kind of like a huh? Yeah. Oh my like, god. Yeah. It's been around since then. Why were we using aspartame before and not that? But now that everybody knows that aspartame is bad for you and so they were scared of that word, now we put this other one in there. And that's what it, funny. I, that just seems weird to me. So, it seems yeah. like why weren't we using that before if it's, it was, if it's so great, right? It's because people people aren't necessarily <laughs> knowledgeable and informed. What they hear is the aspartame. Yeah, that's and it. So, no, yeah. totally. I get, that's what I'm weird. I'm trying to talk to the consumer right now. Like think about that for a second. Like think it's been around since 1988. Well, here's here's the Nobody next step. Nobody was using it before. Here's the next step. I'm going to make another prediction here's the next step so then the next step will be that it'll be artificial sweeteners that people don't want so then things will not start to say sweetened naturally and then what they're going to do is they're going to take stevia and they're going to process it to fucking hell and create a sweetener with that but then it will not necessarily be like raw stevia it'll be this highly processed Natural. Can oh, you? Yeah. Do you think you can you produce stevia even further down? You think? Oh yeah, there's yeah. A, there is there is a product I can't remember the name of it that that's from stevia that is basically you know oh. just because it came from you know natural 
I'm going to look it up right now. Super concentrated. I did not know that. I didn't know that you could concentrate it any more than what it was in this little powdered sugar form. Yeah, it's called, uh, let's see what it's called. Wow. Reb A. Reb A. Diocide That just a. sounds bad. Yeah. It sounds, sounds, <laughs> sounds like, like cancer. Yeah, like straight yeah. poison. It sounds yeah. like cancer to me. Yeah. No. <laughs> cool. Not good. So, you guys ready for some uh, some some current events? Current right? events. Daily pump time. Beep, 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 Here it is. So, uh, I'm going to read an article. I'm going to read a title to you. Yeah. And um, your job, well, after I read this, is to not, not be disgusted. Oh, God. With... Oh. What are you uh, bringing to with, us, bro? Be disgusted with the current state of men oh, in great. society. Here we go. Okay, ready? Yeah. The U.S. Army ditches grenade throwing requirements because too many recruits can't throw can't throw far enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! <laughs> they actually so they, they like lobbying it to get like, into the yeah. army. There's tests you take, right? Oh, so like you got to run this particular speed, climb this wall, whatever. And one of them is you need to be able, <laughs> you need to be able to throw a hand a hand grenade uh, between twenty to thirty meters away from you, and because so many people can't do it, they're just gonna they're ditch, just taking it they're off. They're just taking it off. No wow. more grenades. Well, I think they're still gonna use like, grenades. Sorry, they're just gonna fucking throw them not as far. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm <laughs> Teach him the granny toss. What the fuck? Wow, that's sad, man. Is going on? How far is twenty five meters, dude? Dad's out there. Oh, do your job. I don't. I don't throw three, there's, shit. All there's the time. three. There's three feet a meter. So our studio right here is about. Uh, I don't know. I would say forty yards. So that's a hundred and, you know, hundred and twenty feet right there. Right. So it's less than the the whole length of this. <laughs> they can't throw a grenade that far. Come yeah. on. You dude. said how many feet? Is it feet or yards? No, twenty no. to thirty meters. Meters. Okay, twenty three. So that's how 90, many feet? That's ninety that? feet. So it's ninety feet, roughly. Is it? So ninety to hundred feet. But even then, that's not very far, bro. Well, let me, no. I'm gonna look up twenty five yeah. meters to feet. I want to be sure because that's it's there's there's three feet in a meter. Yeah. God damn, that's you're, it's eighty two feet. Yeah. This yeah. is that's what's going on here. Yeah, that's not very far. No, that's that's insane. So anyway, uh, so there's two things here that I think we should talk about. One. Why can't we throw a grenade this far? What? Yeah. What the fuck <laughs> is well, going just, on here? Yeah, they just didn't learn how to even throw anything. It's either that, or they're just weak sauce, or yeah. you're probably both, right? And B, why is the military reducing its standards? Yeah, like I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. You know what I'm saying? Well, they need recruits, and so it seems like this big compromise. I think right? that's the thing. Yeah. That, that's exactly what it is. It's a fucking business, bro. Yeah. Why well, you come on? Quit playing coy. Are you, are you <laughs> gonna, say, like, you yeah. know, it's a business. Are they going to turn them away? No, oh, yeah. they're going to have to conform. To right. We're at a point right now. We don't got. even care if these people have any fight in them whatsoever. If you're willing to sign uh, up, we'll take you. Oh, shit. You, you imagine? I'm just picturing right now. They're going to put them in the, the drone section where they just sit there with their fucking, you know, goggles on and <laughs> the drone blow section. people up. You know? <laughs> you're a drone person. <laughs> you you can't throw a grenade. Need send you, know? you over to the Xbox section. Yeah, could, exactly. Could you imagine? Like, I'm just picturing right now. Like, there's like, like people are in battle, and there's like four guys, and they're like down underneath the ditch, and they're like, "All right, guys, we gotta fucking throw these grenades because yeah. we gotta make some space or whatever." And then they pull the pin, and then they're like, "Hey, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just cut off an interview with Chase Tuning right now from Everforward Radio. He would have been a great guy to talk to about this. Oh, you have to man. bring it up this week. You're with him, I think, this week, and he interviewed yeah. you this week. So make sure you bring that up. I'm gonna to, bring that up. Yeah. yeah so yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Oh about my god, this. that's that's sad. Well, it's just uh, it says. Let's see. Uh, yeah, just lacking the physical ability. <laughs> so uh, this is so according to General to Major General Malcolm Frost, the commanding general of the U.S. Army Center of In initial military training, what we have found is it is taking far, far too much time. It's taking three to four times as much time just to qualify folks on the hand grenade uh, course than we had designates. So what is happening is it is taken away from other aspects of training. Wow. <laughs> that feels to me like if you go into the military of – all of the things that they're going to teach you to, or train you to do, they're like, okay, you need to be able to operate, like shoot this gun and hit this target. You got to be able to like know how to cover people, you know, all these stuff, like all these things. Difficulty wise, I feel like throwing a grenade. It's got to be one of the easier ones. Doesn't it feel like that? 
Like yeah. that's the easiest thing. Oh yeah. Like here, throw this over there. You're done. Cool. Next yeah. next thing. Next. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. It's, it's sad, man. The physicality is going away. Well, it's all turned into mush. Testosterone levels are dropping. Sperm levels are dropping. Um, it's uh, we're homogenizing. We're we're becoming uh, like homogenized milk. You know what yeah. I mean? No cream separates. It's all blended together. Molding into to one, you know, amoeba. We're all gonna have vagina penises or penis vaginas. I'm wow. not sure what wow. which one goes. You know, at least we can bang ourselves. Oh, oh maybe. you went there. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> totally. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, so more current event. You guys yeah, any- I got the. Uh, Oh, man, it's more stupid YouTube stuff. So this, <laughs> I I just get so angry. Like so, we talked about the Tide Pod thing and that being a thing. Well, this isn't. Thankfully, this isn't a thing. But some YouTube channel, I guess, like their whole thing is um, they have like a calendar of like these horrible things to to um, like make themselves do. Um, almost like the thirty days of whatever, like torture myself or whatever. And so this guy decided to put his head in a microwave with cement and cement his head into a microwave. And so he has like a, he had like a a straw that went out so he could breathe. But basically like his friends helped him cement his head into a microwave. What? And all (laughs) this is real. Yes, it's real. These firemen had to come and like saw this thing off of his head and like crack and, and scrape this cement off. Like what in the fuck? I just I read that and I, I I'm like still thinking about Doug, like, please the, the tell me you can find this online. That. Look this up. I gotta see this. He okay, let me back up here. Yeah. A microwave. microwave. Obviously a portable one. Right. So he was like trying to mold it to something. And so he decided to use a microwave. And what he didn't know is like microwaves, they like weld these parts together. So was his was so what he was trying to do, it sounds like, was make like a clay like thing of his head, right? Like yeah. And so he thought cement would be a good idea. Cement, sorry. Yeah. Would be a good idea to to use. And he actually c- c- cemented his head. YouTuber instead. cements his head in a microwave for prank. Fears for his life. Oh yeah. I mean, come on, dude. The guy could barely breathe once I, it hardened up. Like it Can I just say something right now? That's a lie. That's a total lie. He doesn't fear for his life. No. Obviously. Yeah. This guy's a fucking moron and has no fear for his life, or at least doesn't understand the well, concept. Well, I was gonna say maybe he is a moron and he didn't and he didn't realize. You know, it just goes to like he literally was trying to get views. I mean, and this is this is the the concern uh, I have and and the angle that I'm seeing like everybody start to take like the, the the more stupid, the more shocking. Like I'm talking about right now, which sucks that I'm giving him like you know any kind of uh, attention attention, but. At the same time, like, where does this stop? You so know, there's two. I have two. This is happening all over the place. Yeah. It is. I have two sides of me that think th- there's two sides of me on this. One side is, don't give them any attention because then more people are going to do this stuff. And then the other side of me is, give them lots of attention so that these people can can get themselves out of the breeding, you know, population. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Because back in the day, let's be honest, back in the day, if you did stupid stuff like that, I mean, you died and you didn't make any kids. And so it's one of the reasons why humans have succeeded or all animals. We've evolved because the dumb ones died for the most part and the smart ones continued. But today you cement your head in a microwave and then <laughs> firefighters, so ridiculous. firefighters come and save you. Right. Back in the day, you know what would have happened? You just let you die. Yeah, oh, yeah. a long time ago. You, you got to rock that cement <laughs> head, buddy. Yeah, your, your caveman buddies would have been like, well... Uh, I don't have the time or the energy to help you, and you did this to yourself, so we're going to be over here hunting. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. Good luck, yeah, you know. We'll feed you yogurt through yeah, that straw, like, you know. Like, you know, maybe if you're, you know, that's what I'm saying. All I'm saying is you and I touched maybe li- we need to thin the herd a little bit. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> I think thinning the herd's not a bad idea. Yeah. You and I touched a little bit on this with uh, Amanda Bucci. She interviewed Sal and I, Justin, when you were off doing the videos for Hit. And this is the topic we kind of got into, not so much the c- cementing your head in a microwave. Oh, my God. <laughs> but as the, this culture of trying to uh, replicate what you see others doing that have lots of views on YouTube or yeah. Instagram, and it's created this like culture of people that are out there just trying stupid shit, you know, running into people at grocery stores or doing weird pranks or, you know, stapling your dick to a fucking desk and yeah. just weird fucking Ooh, that's shit. That's a good one. I'm right, getting, yeah. like doing, Steve already did that. Right, right, doing weird shit to get attention, and I, I really wonder, like, 
if they understand like where where that probably potentially leads for you. And I, I think there's a big misconception on you know having a million views and actually having a million dollar business. Well, and I know off mic, even with drama, we kind of touched on this because he was bringing up the example of like Jackass, you know, and like right. how it was like their fifth movie or, or third movie or whatever, however many they made. Um, but it's like- It's not a long-term plan. Dude, the energy going into that, you know, you're- 40 something years old and and you're acting like that and like having to eat shit and having to you know like hang off of like something like where while an alligator is biting your ass mm-hmm. or you know it's <laughs> it's like dude no, am i guys, really do have to do this did you guys have a friend i feel like every group of guys has a friend that does these things yeah, did you guys buddy. have that okay yeah. so here's my here's my question for you because i've this is my own personal anecdote my own personal experience I've known several guys like this growing up, um, you know, that were part of my group, several of them. And all of them ended up um, depressed or just not good. Like as we became adults, they either ended up alcoholics or, uh, you know, having trouble with drugs or just their life didn't work out for them. And so I started to develop a theory that when people are doing these crazy things, they're trying to almost seek attention, seek attention and get value from people. Yeah. yeah, and it stops working after a while. Then they don't know how to get the value. Yeah, and it's like they're not addressing. I mean, it, with your friends that you guys knew that were like that, did they end up the same way, or is that just my experience? You know, I don't know where my buddy is at that was like that. I'm thinking of a guy in high school who used to. And he used to do this. I remember him eating a horse turd one time in a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> I remember him eating. A, a, oh, that guy. Yeah, a yeah. pile of ants, a dollar an ant. He did. Uh, um, I remember him. I mean, he. This guy did. I remember, this guy, I remember this guy pulled his dick out and put it in a hot dog bun and wa- and put ketchup and mustard on it and then walked around like he was offering people a hot dog. At the- <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, dude, that's so ridiculous. <laughs> this is so- yeah, yeah, this is. I seen is- some dude take a BB gun and shoot his ball like right in front of yeah. us. Oh, I was like, why? So, you know what's funny? We were talking about low testosterone. Yeah. Like this is fun. <laughs> maybe this is why because <laughs> yeah, the shit we because girls don't do this. Yeah, no girls they have. don't. They just don't. Uh, they just don't do stupid shit like this. They just this. immediately look at it like, stupid, why would I do that? This you is know, for, like, for sure a guy thing. Yeah. Like, we for sure- It doesn't make any sense. And you know what? It makes sense. Like that, I think it's a little bit of that, right? It's a little bit of both, right? It's like seeking attention plus the macho thing. It's a little bit of a combination of everything. No doubt, I agree with you that um, you know some of these- these guys that were doing this when we were younger were, were obviously seeking attention because they weren't either getting it at home or from other people or whatever. And so, but I also think there, there might the be- girls don't seek attention okay. like that. You know what I mean? They do different things. No, no, okay. No. So explain that. That said, I got one more for you guys. Okay. okay explain <laughs> okay. this. All right. All right. So this guy, this guy in, in working out in a gym in Germany, he uh, basically got his dick stuck in a five and a half pound weight like oh, in, in it like, in it in like, it like he was fucking he was fucking the donut he had it yeah it was stuck in the donut and they had to like get somebody to come like that's a big grind and well, so i was right well, a, here's, well, i was hold like on, hold wait on. a minute look at this thing and then they had to smash it apart and everything is and it go, but hold on a second is it a standard size or olympic size because yeah. that makes a difference <laughs> <laughs> sounds like because i've done it with a standard uh, size but i, I yeah. can't make the Cause, olympic because if it's olympic size and and he broke it on his own hey yeah <laughs> firefighter spent three hours using a grinder <laughs> so so here, <laughs> so so trip so this is the thing like wait, this, wait, 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 hold on. I'll back up to this story real quick here because yeah. I, I got to know more information here. Oh, man. Because does this guy, it's at a gym, right? So I'm imagining like a 24 hour fitness. He goes and gets the plate, then takes it to the bathroom. Is that how this I, went I, down? I, you know what? Because he's they not fucking it on the gym yeah, floor. Yeah, they didn't get into those details. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Maybe he was doing wait, exercises. Is young boy or how old? Like, I don't know. This is the type of shit you do when you're like 17, yeah, right? Yeah. 17, <laughs> you put your dick in some weird places. I think it was an older guy. Yeah. You know what, Adam? I wish you were. I wish you were lying. Yeah, like, I wish that was false. Everybody's <laughs> fucked a counter. Everyone's Stop. fucked at bed. Stop right Everyone- there! You're giving away too much. <laughs> You're giving away too Every- much. Everybody's done some weird. Like shit. what propels you to do that? You well, know? that just like- takes a lot of balls. You're inside the gym and you have one of those moments, which I've had before, right? Like I wonder if I fucked that. If that would feel good, right? Like, <laughs> oh God, like, dude. I think every seventeen. You're year giving old- away too much. I think dude. every seventeen year old boy it crosses. But a my- weight. But like, a weight just because it has a hole. Or and what? in a gym, like at least I'm prepared. I bring the weight home. I got Bro, my bag. 
Okay, there's bacteria. I've got, like, I've got my Vaseline. Not I clean, clean it first. I would, yeah. I would clean it. I would, yeah, I would clean it first, and then I'd have my Vaseline. I would be prepared for what could happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're not totally stupid. Yeah. I had a friend. I had a friend once. <laughs> Put a condom on. When you're I was responsible. Like, do you guys remember when you like when you reached the age when it was no longer a secret? You know, with your buddies that you jerk <clears> off. Like there was a certain point where you and your buddies were like, oh yeah, I do that all the time. Right, Nobody right, cares, right. right? Yeah. I had a buddy who. Do you guys remember those? I don't know what they're called, so I'm gonna try and explain it or describe it. They're made out of plastic and they're like a, it's like a tube, but they're filled with water and, and like they slip out of your hand because they roll so quickly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. those. Okay. So well, I had they, a, didn't they, they, they made the fleshlight to look just oh, it was like, like a water. Like, yeah. It was like kind of watery. I remember. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I remember. You know exactly what yeah, I'm you could, do, you could do this with your finger. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I totally remember. I had this. a buddy that, uh, yeah. he was like raving about how great it was no. to uh, bang his, uh, thing, this thing. His, his toy. Yeah. Wow. So but I just couldn't find one. I was like, I'm going to buy one. <laughs> Yeah. Couldn't find one. He's so. probably the Look, founder here's, of Fleshlight. Here's the thing, okay? When people say there's no differences between men and women, there's your evidence right there because- Yeah, you're going to bang a weight in no, public. No, dude. So statistically speaking, men are much higher or a greater proportion of men make up the end. If you looked at a, a line of- like If you looked at a line and that line represented on the left, on one end- um, insanity or jail or you know people who do just dysfunction like major dysfunction and on the other extreme you had extreme uh, accomplishments like you know inventions or whatever just extreme accomplishments either end you have a greater proportion of men than you do women so we on the crazy side for sure men do way more stupid crazy shit than that's why we pay more money for fucking car insurance we just do we just do like if you if I were to tell you a story like, hey, uh, a person uh, yesterday tried to uh, invent a new pair of shoes that could absorb impact and jumped off a building and died. I don't have to tell you if it's a guy or a girl. You would know. <laughs> yeah, I'm right, not right away. Yeah. If it was a woman, do you know how like much news it would make? Everybody uh, be like a woman like did what? that. <laughs> what, what the fuck is going Why? on? And it just it's just so careless. Yeah. yeah. It's just Which, it, it goes against what we, we say about men being logical though. That's what's weird. On the extreme ends, right? right. So like prison dominated by men by far. Like men break rules or break the law. They hurt people, they're more violent. And, but on the other ex extreme, we tend to invent shit and do all that other stuff too. So I don't know. You get and plus, you know what? And it's because we're expendable. We're much more expendable than, than women are. Like <laughs> you could have a society of very few men and a lot of women, and that society is going to do just fine. Oh yeah, they're the gonna, reverse, you're just fine. The reverse would be fucked. Like men don't. So we're expendable in the sense that we can go off and do the crazy shit and die. Women can't. If they do, then everybody's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> then guys are just yeah, it ain't going to work. Nope. Anyway, so uh, I know we've been on a, a path of third rail um, dancing. Oh, oh God! You're gonna keep going this way? Just go. one, just a little bit. Is this is, is our goal right this here? Isn't a little one. If I know what you're to gonna keep bring up. pushing, pushing the limits until finally well, no, we have current, a revolt. It's current. It's current news. Oh, like, what it's, happened? It's, and right. you know, since we're trying to cover current events, I don't, I don't want to gloss over something that's like huge, dominating social media. Well, and what's stuff. going on right now? Sure. Well, you know the, the 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 terrible, terrible tragedy. Oh, uh, where, I know yeah. you're going. Yeah. Wow, you're gonna go there. Yeah, right where the, Christina Rice that, brought that up with Sal she and I. did. Yeah, she did. Yeah, and yeah, that kid just went in and just you know just just a horrible, horrible. I mean, unspeakable, uh, just just disgusting uh, act of evil. Yeah, and of course, this always uh, triggers a gun control debate uh, in this country. And it's, for me personally, it's, and I understand why people would go there because it's the tool that was used for a, a terrible event. Although we don't necessarily do that when other things happen with other tools, you know, like there were several mass killings in Europe. There were a couple in the UK and France where someone got in a car and just ran a shit ton of people over and right. knives you know, uh, and, you know, in, in China, Asia, there was, there yeah. was a guy that killed 30 people with a knife attack, um, in, in 2015 and people don't typically, you know, tr talk about those types of things like, 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 oh, let's ban cars or let's ban knives or even swimming pools, which kills more kids, you know, every month than it, kids can die from, you know, cars or, what, or, or from, uh, excuse me, from guns. But we do tend to, but I do understand why, right? Because guns are, right. you know, um, not everybody owns one. Most people, uh, a lot of people, I should say, not most people, a lot of people aren't comfortable around them. Um, just like if, if a lot of people never drove a car and they read the statistics, I think they would be uncomfortable 
around cars too, right? Well, imagine, imagine if it's we just, it's just back into you know, horse and carriage day, right? And you're, you're, all of us are going around in our horse and carriage, and all of a sudden there's like this fucking car flying in and out of yeah. <laughs> in front of us, like how scared to death everybody would yeah, be. Yeah, and so that's yeah. part of it. And it so would be so anti. And right? so it's this, it's this whole gun control thing. And so what I like to when I talk about because uh, I have a lot of friends on either side of this debate. I have friends who are very yeah, pro gun control, and then I have friends that are very. Uh, happy with the way the laws are now and are very staunch supporters of the second amendment. Um, and I'm a obviously pro Liberty individual and I, on, on a moral level, I do believe that humans have a right to defend themselves. And I don't think that should be infringed upon, but just because from a moral, you could say whatever you want with it. Maybe it's dogmatic, but it is something that I, I firmly believe morally speaking is somebody's, you know, God given or whatever you want to call it, uh, right or Liberty. Um, but that being said, I also like to get into this discussion and talk pragmatism because uh, I, I don't want to be dogmatic. I want to be realistic. I want to be pragmatic. And the only way to do that, the only way to do that is if we eliminate or try to, it's not, it's impossible, right? But eliminate emotion from the conversation, mm -hmm. try not to be charged about it and just look at the numbers and look at the pragmatism uh, of what is being proposed as a solution with new gun laws and see, and let's just do that and see what makes sense. Not what feels good, but rather what makes sense because laws that are based on intention and not on result or, or usually end up terribly or when we have a problem, but we don't fully understand the problem. Mm-hmm. So then we try to create a solution for something we don't understand. And I can say confidently, 100% right now, and I'll debate anybody with this, the problem of a 17-year-old kid or a random individual going into a school and killing innocent children or people and then killing themselves, which is usually what happens, although it didn't happen this time, it's usually what happens, that is clearly far more complex than they're just being access to guns mm -hmm. to, to me. And, and I, oh, there's I, many, it's oh, like what we talked about. There's a, it's a very complex There's problem. a ton of, of variables that come with that. And I know Christina was trying to get us to talk about that and the possibilities of it having to do with nutrition and what's going on with our food. Mental and, health. Yeah, and mental yeah. health. And, you know, I, I, I don't agree nor disagree with that, that theory. I don't, but I 100% don't believe it's one thing. I don't think there's one thing that is causing these people to do it. Now, we want to point the finger at the gun because the gun obviously is the tool that was used for that, but I don't think guns would eliminate evil, and I don't think yeah. guns would do that at all. And this is coming from somebody who <clears throat> my father took his life with a gun. So if guns didn't exist, I'd still have a father technically, right? That's what... You know, that's somebody, what they would have you believe, right? That right. That if they didn't have, if he didn't have the gun, then he's not going to do it. Although, although I disagree with. Yeah, that. I feel like if you yeah. really want to do right, that, I think I, I think when you do things that extreme, whether you're taking your own life or you're taking, I think somebody, the tool doesn't matter. I think exactly. Yeah. I think the tool. It's a reductionist like mentality. I want to like I want to figure this out. Like, what's the culprit? What's the one thing? And it's like these guys said. I I just don't feel like it's one thing at all. Well, so when you so what I've done is I've dived in pretty deep, and I did this. Uh, after Columbine. Remember Columbine? That whole deal with the mm -hmm. kids that went in and it was terrible, right? And I was young at the time. I was in my 20s and it was shocking to me. And so I dove deep into these situations and like, why? Like, what's going on? Like, like you know, people like to say, oh, they're just crazy, right? Well, they're just crazy people. Obviously, obviously they're fucking crazy. Um, but, but what does that mean? And there's a lot of crazy people. Why do some people do something like that? Well, the Columbine killers actually wrote considerably, uh, c considerable amounts of, of text about how they felt and why they did what they did. And I think it makes sense when you're trying to figure out why to listen to the reasons that they give you. Mm -hmm. Not saying there's an excuse or anything like that, but... <laughs> I think you're going to get more insight. Like, well, what did they write? What did I don't they understand say? why we don't we don't handle this the same way that we handle successful uh, robberies of a bank. A lot of people don't know that like 50% of, of bank robbers are actually successful. 
Hmm. And that's because they won't put it on the news. They don't talk about it. And that's because they don't want to promote more banks being robbed by letting people know that. Well, then they actually catch them. They use them to catch other bank robbers because it's like, uh, you know, they don't know. Or they publicize those ones, right? So I, I don't understand why we do this with like a mass murder like this. Not to say that, you know, we should just keep everybody in the dark and not tell anybody. But at the same time, too, like... When something like this happens, all of a sudden we put it all over the news, and then I feel like you get these other kids that want to copycat. So, yeah. so you, you, I don't know if you realize how much truth there is in what you're saying. So, psychology, they've already known this. this is an actual statistic. The, the more that these things happen, the more likely they are to happen. And psychologists will say that if you're an individual who is in the state of mind, which I'm going to get into in just a second, of what they think – of someone who would do something like this, that um, a push, a slight nudge in a particular direction is sometimes all that they need. And so if you're on the edge or you're in the state of mind and then you see something on TV, uh, it you it tends to happen more often because they'll see it and then it, not necessarily that they want fame, although that can be part of it. More, I think, uh, and what they say is it's just, it, they feel something. And so what I was going to get at is these people, when they write about what they did or why they did it, it is, uh, it, it is a sense of nihilism. It is mm-hmm. extreme meaninglessness. Like there's anger, there's hatred, there's sadness and despair, and then there's nothing where you literally feel nothing. Mm-hmm. And that nothing space is actually the most dangerous state of mind for anybody to be in. And, and I, so I used to train a psychiatrist and we got on the topic of suicide once and we were talking about it at depth because there was a local surgeon. Remember, I used to train a lot of doctors and surgeons. There was a local surgeon. He was a general surgeon and he was a beloved doctor. Like everybody fucking loved this guy. Everybody loved this guy. Super nice guy, smile on his face, great husband, great father. And he, but he did battle with depression, but nobody knew because he kept it to himself. Well, um, he eventually took his life. He hung himself at a park, I think it was. And I was talking to the psychiatrist, to this psychiatrist client of mine who didn't know him, but knew of him. And I'm like, what, you know, he's a father. Like, how could you, because it's so hard for me to understand. And of course I can't understand. I'm not in the state of mind, right? Like, wh- why would someone do that? And she goes, you know, it's not when, when someone's at their lowest point, like sad, 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 that's typically not when they do something like this. Because when you're that sad, you don't even have the energy. Like you just, you just want to lay there. Like you don't even have the energy to do anything. All right. And it's, it's when you're coming out of it that you find the motivation or she's like, when people feel nothing mm. where they literally feel so numb and disconnected that it becomes a living hell and that that everything is meaningless. Like what's the yeah. point? What's the Which point? Which I've heard a lot of um, antidepressants can like, well, some speculate that that could get you in that sort of state of mind. So that's a side effect. Right. It's actually a side effect of, of certain anti and, and, and um, one thing that all these killers have had in common is they've all been on powerful, you know, uh, antipsychotic or psychotropic type drugs like antidepressants. Now I'm not blaming them. Not right. blame it because right. it, it could also be one. It could also be this one factor. It could also be right. Uh, I think the doing, effect of I think the fact do, that I they think were, blaming that is just as bad as blaming the gun, right? Yeah, it could yeah. be that they. Right. That, why are they on them? Well, they because they have these terrible mental issues. Not that those cause them, but you're right, Justin. That is a side effect, and there are some interesting statistics to show that suicide does increase, or or you have to watch out for it among kids who you put on antidepressants. In fact, they'll tell you, "Hey, watch out for these signs during the transition period when the person." Is going through these. So, what happens in these in this state of mind where you feel nothing is if you start to hate life because of it. If you start to hate the people around you, if your people are mean to you, or your life has been tough for you, and you've had a terrible. Because let's be honest, life is hard for everybody. There's everybody has challenges in life, but some of us have it a lot harder. Mm for whatever reason. And sometimes it's not as easy as looking at that person and saying, oh, that person has a tough life. Sometimes it looks like they have everything, but in reality, there's a lot of challenges going on. So now these people develop just a a severe hatred for life and no value for it. It doesn't mean, it's meaningless and I hate it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is just 
take out as much of it as possible and take myself out. Yeah. And that is the state of mind that you're dealing with when we're talking about this. Now, I personally don't think it's a, it's a gun issue, and here's why I don't think it's a gun issue. And I don't like comparing the U.S. to other countries because uh, that is – you can't. You can't compare this country to other countries because – We already have too many guns in circulation. And we're unique. Yeah. Yeah. It's a unique country. You're right, Adam. We've had guns – since day one. It's in our constitution. It's the second. It's not the first amendment, but it's the second the can fucking amendment. has been opened. It's there. We have more guns in circulation than people, period. End of story. Um, they're already out there. And those are legal guns, by the way. We don't know how many illegal guns uh, are out there. Well, look at look at us, you know, taking marijuana to a schedule one, what that did. I mean, it just drove a black market. Yeah. If you do that with guns, you're not going to... They're be already impo- out there. Yeah, it'd be impossible to get rid of... Not only get rid of all of them, it'd, get, it'd be impossible to get rid of even most of them. I mean, you, mm-hmm. most of them would still exist out in circulation. Only now you drive the price up, and then now you create a black market. Well, for well without it. us getting into some kind of martial law state that's where it. they come and they they take all your shit. And that's, even, that's they, it. And, and, and even, then, and even tell then, me that's a good idea. Well, and even then, that wouldn't that would not solve the black market. That would just drive it even more because if they even got no, if they it got just into gives mar- the government way more right. power. You, you know that people that have tons of guns and found out martial law happened would be burying those guns for later and then you'd be turning around and selling them for a hundred thousand dollars a gun because they're so valuable the, the it worst would de- it would not work the worst because i've actually and, and a lot of people say no we don't want to ban all guns but i have heard people be like ban them all take them by force that's stupid worst worst thing you could possibly do would be that for many reasons here's one in order to create a situation or enforce a law like that you would need to create a police state in this country. This country would resemble very strongly the Soviet Union or Nazi Germany. Forget the killing the Jews and killing... Just fine, none of that's happening. But in terms of control and power, we would have a Gestapo of our own. Mm -hmm. We would knock on fucking doors, kick doors down, and and those are the people that legally have them we would go after. So that's number one. And that police state, by the way, doesn't go away. It's not like they'd be like, okay, we got all the guns. Let's let's dissolve this police state. Just like there's no more Patriot Act, Bullshit, exactly. That would be the scariest, most dangerous thing we could possibly do. And then part two of that is, do you really fucking think freedom-loving Americans would give up their guns peacefully. No way, you would dude. create a civil war like you've never seen. So that's off the table, period, end of story. Then I have people who say, well, let's just ban assault rifles. Well, here's the thing with assault rifle. Assault rifle, when they describe, because we had an assault rifle ban in 1994, which, by the way, had no effect, had zero effect on, on, on any crimes or whatever. But assault rifles, that law that we had before was silly, because I could have two rifles, same caliber, same capacity, you know, shooting a two two three, same magazine, everything. One is a wood stock and looks like it's for hunting. The other one is a black with a black stop and telescope, you know, uh, you know, armrest or whatever. And one looks like an assault rifle, looks scary, is banned. The other one isn't, and they're exactly the same fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the law. Right That's on. how the law was. It would ban the ones that look scary, basically. Because you can tell the people making these laws don't know shit about guns. They're absolutely silly. And then if you look at the statistics, didn't here's- you and uh, didn't you and our boy Brendan get into because he's he's uh, anti gun, isn't he? Didn't, we, you, didn't you guys get into a little? We talked about this a little bit. Yeah. What is his stance on it? Do you remember what? You Bre- know, he wants. Here's the thing. Like I hear a lot of people saying we want reasonable gun control laws, but my question to them is like, okay, what do you mean? What is reasonable? Oh, we want um, you know more background checks, or we want to take them, and it's like we we can take them from people. There's just due process. Because it is protected by the from the Constitution, I've heard people say maybe we should have a um, what's it called when some like a restraining order type of thing where if people closest to you report you, then the government, then the police can come and do a restraining order while they review the case to get you know the oh, wow. the judge involved. So now we're gonna get neighbors narking on neighbors. Yeah, and that's got its own issues, yeah. right? And then the other thing is here's the other statistic. This is a fact, by the way. Uh, the last three decades, we have seen, not just America, by the way, all Western nations, all Western nations have seen dramatic decreases in total violence, including gun violence. So the U.S. today has less total gun violence, total violence, total murders than it did 30 years ago, and yet their gun ownership today is far higher 
than it was then. There's way more guns in circulation today than there was 30 years ago. And 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 but this is a trend across the world because I'll have people being like, "Oh, Australia had a, a, a you know a mass shooting, then they banned guns and they haven't had one since." Well, they followed the same trend all the other countries have. So was that part of it or is it that and then here's the other question are people not having mass murders in other countries because they don't have guns so in other words if we just gave people guns if if guns were accessible in other countries does that mean that then they would do all this as well and i don't know if i believe that i seriously think there is an a cultural issue yeah in this country and i think it's a mental issue i've heard a lot of speakers sort of speculate on this and have opinions and as far as it even being somewhat related to you know the way that we have so, like suburbs structured and like the way that you uh live like adjacent to your neighbors but you never have any uh, interaction with them and so these interactions uh person to person are are just less and less frequent and it builds this sort of disconnect with um you know that that sort of positive um, interaction that you're supposed to have, that 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 connection you're supposed to have with other human beings. You start to lose empathy, and um, you know this could kind of spiral if well, you already have a mental condition. Well, the vast majority of gun violence happens in heavily populated metropolitan areas. The vast, by the way, vast majority, like 85 percent, I think, of all deaths due to guns happen by handguns. Um, and if you take out suicide, which suicide is, you know. The, the victim is the own person, so it's their own cells. But if you take out suicide and you take out metropolitan areas, we are quite comparable to other countries. And we do have more metropolitan areas with more density of population than other countries. We're a massive country. So you take those things out and we're very comparable. But handguns make up a majority, the vast majority of gun violence and gun death. I don't ever hear anybody say ban handguns. And that's because they're not nearly as scary as an AR-15 mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. rifle, right. and that's that's where it's coming from. I just think it's it's way more complex. That's why I hate politics, man. We're always playing on people's emotions. Like very yeah. few, pe- and I feel like very few people know how to look beyond whatever the new law is going to be. And like, what is the domino effect if we put this in place? Like, they're putting out this in the news to obviously play into your emotions, so that we can potentially pass some new law, new legislation that comes out. But yet, none of you have this ability to really think, okay, well, what does that, because everything, everything has a cause and effect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when we decide that, okay, we're going to come out with this new law or new new rule, think of all the positive things and also think of all the negative yeah. things that that potentially could cause and then weigh out your decision versus like, guns are bad, get rid of them. Yeah. Like, wait a second, that's so idiot. It's such an idiot to think like that. Like, wait a second, what could that lead to? And think about that and then would we be in a better place if you did that, you know, no, I, I just don't think so. You know what else nobody talks about? The uh, number of people that saved their own lives because they had a gun. It's in the thousands yeah. every year. Yeah, People don't talk about that either. How many times people have saved their life, their own life, because they had their gun? And how many, and there's a lot, by the way, there's a uh, you know huge percentage of gun-owning women, because people like to think it's a conservative male thing. Um, some of the loudest supporters of the Second Amendment are women who were uh, victims of some kind of a crime. Mm-hmm. Because let's be honest, if you're a woman and you don't live in a safe area, or you you know you've got a, you're in a bad neighborhood, or you have to walk to work, or you're a single mom, so you don't have much money, or whatever. Um, the I mean, the fact of the matter is. Men are bigger, men are more aggressive. I, us, we've never experienced that, right? We've never experienced where we're walking down the street and we have to constantly think about, you know, our safety. Well, women do much more often than men, I should say, because guys are bigger and more aggressive and stronger. If you're a woman and you're unarmed and a big aggressive guy wants to do something to you, you're fucked. You're like a child. They can hold you down. They can do whatever they want to you. The great equalizer is... The, bear, the right to bear arms, and some of the most ardent supporters of it are women who are like, hey, look, I got raped or I got mugged. I went and got, I, you know, I got you know, my concealed carry license, and now I feel confident and safe because I can defend myself because a cop can't be there yeah. you know, in the next in like th- 10 minutes, three minutes. seconds. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is you know, people are like, oh, it's, it's outdated. You know, let's, let's take it from, the, from the, you know, the, the, the Bill of Rights. And you can do that. You can try doing that. It would require, it's very difficult. You would need a majority of, uh, 
you know, the Congress, and then you'd need a majority of the states to ratify it, and then you'd have to, it would be a very difficult process, but you can amend the Constitution. It can happen. I highly, highly doubt that it would ever pass, but that would be to, the way to do it. Um, I wouldn't be happy if it happened that way, but hey, you know, that's that's the way our Constitution works. But we have to wonder why. Why did why was that the second thing in our Constitution? Why did the founding fathers of America with this crazy idea of freedom and liberty for the individual, which really is fucking crazy, especially at the time when there were kings and queens yeah. tyrannizing everybody, why did they even put it in there? Well, because for that reason, so they, because we so couldn't go back to, to that fight, <laughs> right? To, because against tyranny, and then for people Soldiers who are like, would just come knocking at your door and fuck with you, and you know what? And then people would be like, oh yeah, I'm sure, like you know, the, the civilians could never win against the U.S. Army. Uh, they don't have to win. You know, Vietnam is a great example. Like we were outpowered the fuck out of Vietnam, but it took forever and it just wasn't worth it. And I guarantee you, if some crazy lunatic politician you know, was in charge, and I'm sure some of you right now think there's someone who's a president now that's a lunatic, especially those of you on the left who don't like him. If there was a crazy lunatic president and there was some kind of national emergency and then they passed, you know, crazy laws and then the government was coming into your home and trying to fuck with you, they would think twice in America because they know that they would have, uh, it wouldn't be worth it. It wouldn't be worth the fight. There would no, it would never... It would never work out. Casualties the that. first step would be to disarm the populace. This is exactly what uh, you know tyrannical governments do every single fucking time. Hitler did it. Mm -hmm. He took away their guns slowly, 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 and if, definitely from the Jews. And then he went in and did what he did. And had them had they been armed, it would have been yeah. a much more difficult thing for him to do. Not saying that that'll happen. Okay, the odds of that are so small; it's not even funny. Definitely not saying that'll happen. But if you're one of these people that compares Trump to Hitler constantly, you really want to fucking you know, be, yeah. have government be the only one yeah. with guns? Right. If you really believe that? I mean, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So You ever get pulled over with that mug? <laughs> you like that? Oh, it's, shit. It says, bitch, where's my coffee? And then the, the handle <laughs> is, a, is, a hand, is a gun is, after uh, our conversation, of course. Right, right, right. So right. what's in your coffee? Uh, it's pretty aggressive. Uh, what is that? Actually, you know, it's funny you bring that up. We, I'm drinking the... Um, I'm drinking my normal coffee, but Katrina found a little hack. So she doesn't like coffee, right? So she doesn't. But yeah. So I but, know that. but about a year what? ago, yeah, she doesn't drink coffee. And about a year, she's like, "What is it with coffee? Why does everyone drink coffee?" And I'm like, "Oh, it'll change your life, honey." <laughs> she's like, "She's like, well, I don't feel like I need it." I said, "You probably don't need it. I think you're a very productive person without it. But if you were to start it." You'd probably be twice as productive, just so you know. And so she's been like <laughs> taking little sips of it in the morning and she's like, oh, I just don't like the aftertaste. And she's yeah. and so she's been slowly like finding ways to make concoctions so she could drink because she does like the after effects. She's like, because she drinks green tea. She's a tea drinker. Oh, okay. So she's so that, she knows she's that's familiar so with funny caffeine. coming yeah. from the guy that got us all hooked on speed stuff. I know, right? The entire staff. Right, right. He's doing it to Katrina now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, no, totally, so you're slowly I'm just ramping it up. Here, yeah, that's right? good. So, uh, so anyway, she's been trying to make all these concoctions. Well, she, she's like, Hey, have you done the cacao bliss in the coffee yet? Oh my God. It's so good. And I hadn't yet. And so she takes the, she takes a normal cup of coffee, pours a cup of coffee, leaves some room, puts the scoop in. And then we have one of those frothers, mm -hmm. you know, and then she just whips it and kind of frosts How it. How good is it? Oh my goodness. Dude. It's so that's what I'm sipping on that warning right Warning though, because cacao has got its own stimulant properties. You mix the two and you are fire. Yeah. You're ready to go. So what I do, because you guys know I'm, I'm a little more sensitive to caffeine than you guys, obviously you guys could fucking breathe it and yeah. never have an effect. I can't believe how much you guys can drink. It's like water. To I'm me. jealous by yeah. the way. I can only do it once sure. a day. Uh, I go cacao bliss and then I do the gold juice because the gold juice has got some, uh, compounds in there that help calm you hmm. so i do that and oh and then the turmeric in Is there that to just have that effect last longer together oh, yes so the cacao bliss with the green you just don't oh, want the no, jittery no, effect that goes with it yes really so fucking i huh. feel like i feel like one of them's kind of got like this like know, it feels like a counter citrusy orange taste and then the other one's more of a no. chocolatey cream no i go cacao they're both good by themselves with coffee so whatever you want to do uh, typically, I just do gold with my coffee because I like that it takes the edge off, but it makes me feel you know I still focused. But then I've done it with cacao, gold juice, and then I did the typical butter, coconut oil. You know coffee. that sounds like, which is interesting that even Pete's now has has done this like sort of a gold uh, latte where they have turmeric and ginger. I know, and it's a thing. 
I, I guess it's a thing. And, and you just you just like made that up on your own. And huh? if you have uh, gut issues, and coffee sometimes can be harsh because of the oils, mm-hmm. the turmeric and the gold juice from you know Organifi or whatever is anti-inflammatory. Rests better in your stomach, it, big time, big time. I mean, I will say this about Organifi because we get sent. I don't think do we ever share how many supplements people send us? <laughs> no, we, we we do get a lot. We have a closet full of. We could open up a GNC. In yeah. fact, we're gonna do a side business where we sell. <laughs> You should see Sal's like, eyes every time we get them. Too. I've tried just everything. Like, Ew, you know, I gotta hide them half the time. We got the... so many supplements. From he's, a, people. he's a supplement junkie, bro. It's I know. Still I think the audience yeah. needs to know oh, this. Oh, for like, sure. Like, he gets you a can... little bit of the handshake. Yeah, he you does. Know he mean? does. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I do have, especially it. the packages is all. Like, I catch nice him. Every, I catch every, every now and then. I go in the in the closet and there's like one missing. There's wrappers on the floor, so I was like, Sal is in here, dude. I'll test everything. Right. So sometimes I test them all at the same time, so I don't know what's happening. But the they sent us. All, all these people send us stuff and I'm not just saying this because we're sponsored by Organifi and I'm sure you guys will agree the taste and quality of the Organifi supplements is oh it's superior totally yeah totally superior I know it totally is. superior that's why I mean and, and some people are you know they worry a little bit because it's a bit expensive but we've we said that from the very beginning you get I mean, what you they, pay they for they source the great you know the best quality I've had uh, one warning though about the gold juice so yesterday I made it myself a nice gold juice in macadamia nut milk and I took it upstairs, spilled some on the carpet. Uh oh! In your oh. new place? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh no! Stained it nice like you can't stain. believe. Oh no! Mm. Did yeah. you try? You so tried don't it. spill oh, it. I have a little steam cleaner. Yeah, it didn't portable. Do shit. Didn't do a thing. Turmeric they used to oh, use man. back in the day. There to, goes your deposit to dye clothes yeah. and shit. So good luck. Yeah. Is it true? You know what you do? You just yeah. you know I, what you do you, you you have your dog poop. Whoa on whoa whoa! It. Back up there. The Turmeric was used to dye clothes. Turmeric uh, is uh, was used as a dye in some cultures. Yes, I didn't. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Because mm-hmm. its ability to stain things. The more you know. Yeah, that's like one of those commercials. The, the rainbow yeah. flies over. <laughs> <laughs> this quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Breno Fit. Is FRC the future of fitness? Oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a bold that question. A very bold statement, sir. So you know, we had FRC here uh, yeah. uh, recently teaching a certification. They had 88 trainers in our facility. And Jessica, my girlfriend, took the course. Yeah. And one of the things uh, I love most about her is she's a legit sponge, like for reals. So check this. You guys are going to love this, right? She took uh, Eldoa when they were here. Mm-hmm. She did the Czech course. She went down and did Czech. Then she did FRC. And by the way, when I first started dating Jessica, she was a decent trainer for her level uh, of experience. Actually, for her level of experience, she was really good. I say decent because she didn't have like a ton of experience with good trainers. Hmm. But for her, the level- I was going to say tread lightly there. So for the I level mean, of experience she had, she'll she was- She'll be listening. No, no, no. For the level of experience she had, she was really good. She just didn't, wasn't, she didn't exposed to a lot of- Which that just, it just comes in time. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. So then when we first started dating, she would, I mean, I'd say 50% of our conversations revolved around her asking me questions about correctional exercise, fitness, muscle adaptation. And she's, a, she's such a sponge that I would tell her something- and then the next day, I'd hear her talking about it and teaching it, and she's saying it exactly like she understood it. She didn't just memorize it. So she's been that way. And I used to tell her when we first started dating, I said, you know what's funny? I said, because I'm doing Mind Pump, we're gonna, I'm interviewing all these people, and we'll have all these opportunities for you to take these courses. I said, you're going to surpass me in a very short period of time because I know how fast you learn. And she'd be like, shut up. You're just being nice. You're just because you love me, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, no, you're going to fucking surpass me. So, uh, oh, and on top of it, she's also been... Uh, being mentored by Brink. So I don't know if you guys know this, she goes to Brink's office mm-hmm. and helps him out, uh, you know, a couple days a week or once a week. And you guys know Brink is a, he's a legit, like, Badass. he's the fucking man, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so what was her thoughts? So, well, I'll tell you. So yesterday uh, we worked out because I haven't worked out in a little while and I was all hyped and I hadn't had caffeine in a while. So I drank some, uh, some coffee and I went in there and I went fucking nuts and I was pulling five plates and feeling like an asshole. And then my SI joint was a little sore on my left side. So I told her, I said, you know, I said, if I 
go too aggressively, the place that I tend to hurt is on my left SI joint and I can't figure it out. But I do think it has to do with my hips, my left hip, because my left hip doesn't have the same mobility and control as my right hip, especially <clears throat> internally, externally rotating, all these other things, as in, internally in particular, internally rotation. So she said, oh, cool. She's like, if, if, you, if you don't mind, if you've got 40 minutes, l- let's go downstairs on the, on the rug and I'll take you through some stuff. This fucking girl, dude. She's taking, first I did, she did some Eldoa with me and her, her how she's, uh, what's the word when you're, you're telling people what to do, like little cues. Yeah, her cues were incredible. So she did that with me. Then she's taking me through FRC, 90-90 movements, stuff that Brink had her do. This 45-minute treatment where the entire time I'm quiet and I'm just being completely blown away by her knowledge. And I see what she's doing as she's doing it. I can tell what she's doing. She was giving me new ranges of motion and she was connecting me to these new ranges of motion, which I think is what she learned at FRC. And so I was asking her, what, how much of this was what you learned at the FRC course? And not all of it, but a nice chunk of it was from the FRC course. And then the other part of it was Brink and then Eldoa. And uh, I think it's so do you believe brilliant. It, do you I don't think, think it's, you believe it's a future of fitness. I don't know if I go that far. There's no, so I, much. I, I would. Let me I, I, weigh in on this. Yeah. yeah. Let me, I'm gonna now you're more. You guys are more versed. In, yeah. Well, okay. because this has been my my train of thought for over the last couple of years, just because I've been heavy in the research of like mobility, and I knew that that was the most neglected portion of training, you know, in my programming, and so that was something that I really vested myself into and saw what was out there and went through, um, you know, a lot of the protocols and different modalities that were out there. And so I knew of FRC for a long time. Um, and then I actually did attend, you know, for the first day, um, and, and got, you know, a lot of great, great information, you know, in their philosophy. And so my, my, my overall like opinion of it is that it's very, very much ahead of everybody. Like it's, as far as like having, um, you know, like scientific based, uh, training that's that's really cutting edge and is really kind of uh, you know uh, they've they've put the time in and 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 like people that actually do it will see what does that type stand of for again? functional range conditioning. Okay. So the thought process being that like if you have a normal strength curve where uh, you know at the peak of of your your strength curve is somewhat in the middle. So their thought process is now to stretch point A and point B even further. So you're able to now um, increase that that strength and in, in, in elongate it through all these different like increments and angles mm-hmm. of range of motion. So and a lot uh, of what we do in Prime Pro is uh, comes from you know some stuff that well and yeah, a, from a, FRC. A but lot. yeah, go ahead, Justin. Okay, so. So that being all said, it's it's very revolutionary. It's very, very like well researched, and the science is sound and and ahead of everybody. But I just don't it it, it being the new what do you, what do you say the future of fitness? I think that um, it's going to be a, you know one of the tools that is going to set people apart. But it's it's not going to take over. Of course, it's not. It's no. not going to take over. It's no. going to benefit it your training, but it, like. I see people, they totally are so into it that it's becoming like uh, their way of training. Which, are you getting a bunch listen, of disciples? Listen, it, listen. It, this is go, feeds into that whole movement culture. It's all, it's, this always happens, man. Every time something it cool always, comes out, right? Yeah, here's, first of all, okay, and, and I, I'm with Justin, like uh, I've been very familiar with FRC for quite some time, a huge fan of the work. The science is, is very, very much so on point, and I do believe the same thing too, that they're way ahead of everybody. We utilize tons of kin stretch. I'm cute, positive, 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 positive. Nothing negative to say, but I will say that I definitely don't think it's the future of fitness. And that's because, first of all, a lot of the science is based off of science that we've known for some time. I mean, PNF. I was using yeah, PNF, PNF has been uh, forever for 15 years. You know, I, I and and what's that, the difference between FRC and PNF? There's well, not, not a lot, not much, not I mean, a lot. The change of verbiage, and, right? So I think that's what they've done a good job. I think they've they've branded it better. Yeah. And I think that uh, obviously we've evolved more in science since then. PNF has been been used in, in in athletes for quite some time, 
And I so <laughs> the science is not that revolutionary. I think the maybe uh, their application. Yes, their application of it is incredible, and I think it's needed more now than ever has with all these baby boomers and then all this this posture and dysfunction that we're seeing in the younger generation oh, coming yeah. up. Big time. So when that being said. I'm 100%. I think when you talk about top three certifications you could go through, FRC 100% is uh, I would recommend because I think it's that that applicable to all the clients that you're probably going to train. Now, that being said, I also see the cult-like side of it happening like always. So you've got these guys that have these big Instagram pages that are doing all these badass fucking controlled movements and i mean I, i'd be the first to admit that i see it and i'm like damn dude i wish i could do that but the there's a couple things that people don't i think really understand is one um just like with bodybuilding just like with sports there's a genetic potential for some of these people that frc and you become an instructor and you learn how to do it you just fit the mold so perfect. Your frame is great for it. You can do these fluid movements like in just way better than the average person naturally already. And then they then they turn it into like that's all of their training. Their training is all this kin stretching. Now, if all you cared about was health and feeling good, I, I think it's an fucking if you're gonna get dogmatic about something and you're only gonna do something, it's probably one of the better modalities. Well, I th- what I really appreciate them is that they've taken like our focus back to um joint function and like right. in in like telling you like you know you may not have the capacity to go forward in your training and and put load onto these joints because they're not even functioning the way they should be functioning and this is a a, a very big problem that people just bypass and mm-hmm. so this whole system has done a, an excellent job of highlighting that important fact that you know this is where we need to begin and we need to spend time in this area and, and address all these pending issues and uh what else i also uh, appreciated was it's as far as like addressing the human body what we've all been taught like you know and especially going through you know anatomy physiology forever and like biomechanics and going you know when i was in college um, and he, they sort of addressed this in the class that we've all learned dead anatomy and we haven't really learned oh, living anatomy. That's a good fucking point. And so it's what does like, that mean? Like a cadaver versus how anatomy works? Absolutely. Or just looking at it from two dimensions. Yeah. Right. And like, so and, and that being like how everything is, you know, adaptable together. So like, say, you know, you have your muscle tissue, you have your bones, you have your, you know, your ligament, your fascia, and your fascia. It's all, it's all moldable. All of that is adaptable tissue. So, um, you have to treat it as such as, you know, you're going through these different well, movements. I'll, I'll say this. If you're a trainer, I've said this before. I haven't said it in a while, actually. We've talked about this when, when we first started Mind Pump. If you're a trainer and you want that to be your career, and you want to have a lot of value to your clients. Oh yeah. By far, yeah. By far the best thing you could do to provide value to your client is the following. If your clients call you to cancel your workout because they've hurt themselves or because they're in pain, that's you you have you're not providing a lot of value to them. Okay? That's the average trainer. If your client calls you and says, "Hey John or, you know, Susan, I I strained my back or my knee hurts." Can I come see you later today so you can help me out? You have now provided a tremendous amount of fucking value. And it's one of the reasons why I had clients that stayed with me for most of them for half a decade to a decade. Basically, they'd hire me and they never stop. Uh, this is now happening with Jessica where her clients will call her if they're hurting and try and come in an additional time because she's now learned this information. FRC is a certification that is well worth yeah, I agree. the investment. Yep. To give you value as a personal trainer. Just for that reason alone. That's it. Right not, not because you have FRC in your title, but because if someone comes to you and they hurt, you've got real tools that can help. Now, in my understanding of our FRC is this, and this is just because we wrote Prime and I understand how the human body works. Mm-hmm. I just don't know the structure and in, 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 you know, particular structure of FRC. But this is what I experienced when she was taking me through the hip stuff. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create new ranges of motion and then trying to connect to those new ranges of motion. So- an example of that would be 
I go in the splits. This Which, is not by the way, that that would be the definition of PNF. Just that's so right. You know. That's right. So if I get into like the splits, which is a bad well, example, let's mo- just mobility. Yeah, let's but. just say I get into the splits and I go in, I go down as far as I can, and that's as far as I can go. What I now try to do is fire the muscles that I'm stretching, and then fire the muscles that are are I'm opposing. Right. And so mm-hmm. all I'm trying to do is send a CNS signal to the muscles uh, while they're in this new range of motion and I work through new, new, newer and newer ranges of motion and this happened with my hip like my hip cramped up and she told me that's good let it cramp up because it's connecting and then stay in that position when you're done connecting let your body establish that new connection so I think it's brilliant but is anything in a single thing going to be the future no, of fitness? No, 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 no and, and here's, Such a, a here's the thing if this is a trainer who's asking a question that you got to ask yourself because this was always the challenge that I had as a professional was having all the information that I that I need to give to get this person to get to their goal but then also recognizing that that may not be the pathway that they want to take or are willing to take and so there is this, this challenge as a trainer of Okay, I know that I want to give them all this and tell them, follow this diet, train like this, do these things. But in reality, over 80% of the people fail at doing that. So if you really care about being successful as a trainer and really providing a great service to people, it's not just having the new cutting edge science or tool to apply to all them because some people aren't even there yet. Some people aren't even beyond the psychological part that's making them have this challenge of not being able to get in shape. And to me, there's there's more of a breakthrough there that I need to work on to evolve as a trainer than an, another tool that has helped. Now, I think, like you said, Sal, by bar none, this is one of the best tools that you could potentially have in your belt, especially when you think about baby boomers, especially if you see about all the dif- dysfunction that we're seeing right now. But then I also don't think that you know having this is like the answer and you know making all your clients do kin stretch for all their sessions now is just going to change their lives dramatically. No, I think what you'll see is you'll apply that to some of them. Some of them will receive it. Some of them will do it well. It will change their life. And then you'll still have the majority of them that don't even put the work in necessary to see the change in their life. And so then you're back to square one again as a trainer is, how do I get this person motivated mm-hmm. to still head in the right direction? Mm-hmm. All right, next question is from Tori Tag. Just listen to episode 646 about women losing their periods and having hormonal issues after an extreme diet and or prep. I am curious how to repair this damage. I listen and read about this issue all the time, but no one ever discusses how to help heal the hormonal issues and metabolic adaptation. I'm about three years out from a really low body fat, loss of cycle, and other hormonal issues. I cannot lean down for anything, even with a moderate reverse diet. Can you discuss how to get the body back to normal. Yeah. Well. Wow. Yeah. Well, step one, you're. you're this is. This is going to tough. It's going to be hard to hear. Okay. Mm. But you're going to have to get fatter, and you're. And, and you're going to have to allow yourself to kind of. And I don't mean go nuts with your diet where you're stuffing yourself <laughs> no, and you're doing no, terrible no. things. Yeah. What I mean is you need to start giving your letting your body feel like it's okay that food is plentiful and that it's okay to get leaner. And that might take a little while. You know, it's funny we had Jason when we had Jason Phillips here who uh, love the guy, right? Brilliant with, with the way he works and coaches clients and very smart dude. And we talked about this and he has a theory that I think I buy, I buy into. And his theory is that when you do these extreme, you know, diet, you know, contest prep or, you know, extreme overtraining over periods of time, especially for women, obviously the body, it, it, it stops giving you a period because it feels like it's not safe to have a child, slows down your metabolism to try and adapt and even after, you know, taking months off or a year off and trying to feed yourself a little bit, he thinks that the central nervous system remembers. It remembers that event and it takes a lot longer for the CNS. I believe that. To say, okay, the coast is clear. Which is why I feel like it's so easy to go back to your default, even when you're making better decisions or training the body yeah, differently. Yeah, because yeah. I, I feel like this, because in her sentence, and I don't know who you are, Tori, and I don't know what's going on, but I can see, I, I'm just based off the last two sentences, I cannot lean down for anything. Mm. Uh, Those are the wrong goals. Right, yeah. I feel That's like- wrong, When you're trying to reverse diet and you're trying to get back to being healthy, yeah. you mm-hmm. have to switch your mindset 
that it's it's not about you getting lean. It's not about you, you know, looking a lean certain way. I feel like she's been trying to still get lean, yeah. right? So she's not even allowing her body to have the time to you know heal itself, quote unquote, heal itself. And by the way, when your body does this, when met- metabolism slows down and you stop having your period, you actually your body's acting the way it's supposed to. So it's not you know we use damage, but really it's not damage. It's actually doing what it's supposed to do so i when i talk to somebody like this and of course again i don't know this person they're exactly what's going on with them but if we're being completely generic here the average client that i'm dealing with that has metabolic damage the typical prescription is this you know two to three times of strength training so like a maps anabolic type of application that would be the perfect routine right maps anabolic would be perfect right so that's the, the 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 application as far as weight training and i don't want you doing any more weight training than that so that when you have the desire to want to lift more do more no we don't we just actually this is a yeah. person who i would not recommend right our, our new program right oh absolutely uh, not no. you know and you know it what's is funny? not for you uh, this is the person no. that probably wants to buy it yeah right. if they see hit and they see oh, oh fuck yeah, yeah this burns the most amount of body fat in the shortest period of time which right. it does but if you're in the right. state of, if your body's in the state and you do hit you're fucked you're not doing a good job so you got to go to anabolic let me go back to what i do with this person so i i first get a program like that in line for them that this is what we're going to be doing for resistance training then i want you to track um for an extended period of time typically i want somebody to be tracking for a few weeks so i can get a really good idea of where their their caloric maintenance is at and then i also want to see where they're kind of their their neat maintenance is at so where how many steps are you taking per day and where of your calories are at and where where's your baseline what doesn't what doesn't gain you weight what doesn't lose you weight what's kind of keeping you there while you're only doing these two to three days of lifting now from there i try and gradually increase your knee through walking so need is non-exercise activity right so not exercise walking just not a hardcore hike a walk like literally just moving around I try and gradually increase that on your non-lifting days while I also gradually increase your calories. And the goal is how much can I continually start to increase those calories without you having to increase in, in any intensity and without you putting on a ton of weight. So that's our, our goal is we're probably going to put some weight on. I'm not worried about that, right? Mm-hmm. We're not going to get super shredded right now. Not worried about that. That's not our goal. Our goal is to start to inch these this caloric intake up week over week if we can. And our way that we counter it is just through movement. Not more exercise, not intensity increasing, not more volume increasing, just moving activity-wise while I'm also stressed. So that's how I keep, it, keep you from putting on a bunch of weight. Obviously, if I went week over week and increased your calories, 100 to 300 calories every week, you would probably put on a ton of body fat after a few weeks. But if I can counter that extra 100 calories with a few hundred more steps or a thousand steps every single day that you're increasing those calories, hopefully I can mitigate the damage of putting on any more weight. But that's not the goal. The goal is not to lean down. And then that's kind of to each person's going to be uniquely different how long I have to inch that up there for them, how soon their body will respond. But that's how I try and get into my clients' heads that are going through this process is these are our goals. What you just heard right now from Adam, and of course it's different from person to person, but what you just heard from him is verbatim the general thing you should do. I mean, that's the best advice you could possibly get. The, the trouble is going to be doing it because mm-hmm. I know what happens because I can already tell by the way you asked your question, you know, nobody wants to wait another year before they can start to get lean, especially when you identify strongly with being lean or you feel fat or, you know, those types of things. Here's a couple things you could do to help that process. So do what Adam told you because what I'm about to tell you won't do shit for you unless you do that stuff also. The other stuff you can do is you can start to throw in some adaptogenic type herbs and foods to help benefit the process. So like, the, th- like them gross sardines that you got over on the tip. <laughs> <laughs> so what I was Are those gonna, still okay? Yeah, they're they, in a can. Okay, they can, yeah. they, you don't have to refrigerate them no, at all. No, 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 no. So what I was going to say is uh, increase your, your, your fat intake, both your quote-unquote healthy fat like fish and your quote-unquote unhealthy fat like saturated fat, which they're all, those are all healthy, by the way, your natural fat intake. So I would say increase your fat intake, saturated fat and fish fats, both will, should positively affect your hormones. So would you, would you recommend like a ketogenic type of diet? I would not recommend a keto diet unless you have food intolerances with grains and stuff because you're, you're cutting too low now. I think you should go low carb. 
More like a paleo esque. Yeah, like more of a paleo diet. Actually, on Thri- at Thrive Market, you can. There's Dude, a little I drop love. Down. I just we just found out that like last week yeah. that you can yeah, actually the drop do, down options. Right. There's a oh, drop so down cool. option. You can click on paleo and then look at all the food options for paleo. So I would say bump your fat intake, and then here's the other thing, which you can also do at Thrive Market. Now that we're talking about it, ashwagandha, great herb that's adaptogenic that helps balance the body out. And here's the other one, mm-hmm. evening primrose oil. Uh, which has been been shown to be beneficial for women. Well, what is that? Evening heard. primrose oil. So it's just get, the where, fat. Where do you get that? You can get Thrive Market. You can oh, buy that, it anywhere. Jesus but. Christ, they have everything. Thrive Market's got yeah. it. Um, so ashwagandha, evening primrose oil, bump your fats uh, like a paleo type diet and do everything Adam said. And again, we don't know your individual case, so you know, bear with right, us. Right, yeah, but, keep in mind that it is generic advice. But generally, everything. that's the best advice. Right. Next question is from Kevin B. Sherman. What are a good substitute exercise for deadlifts and barbell squats? I wanted to put this in here because we haven't answered a question like this in a while. I, yeah. Re- yeah. I re- we used to get this a lot when we the very when we first released maps. Obviously, there's deadlifts and squats mm-hmm. in there because we're all we all think they're staple movements that everybody mm-hmm. should be doing. Right. So we get a lot of people pushing back and being like, "Well, what if I can't do deadlifts and squats? What should I do instead?" Mm-hmm. So it's been a long time since we've addressed this. I think it, we've got quite uh, quite a bit more people listening to Mind Pump now that we should address uh, this issue. And I think starting it off with, um, I don't think that anybody should substitute for deadlifts and barbell squats for the most part. Mm -hmm. There's always exceptions to the rule, Mm. but the exception is not what most people think it is. Most people are thinking like, oh, yeah, well, I'm the exception to the rule. I have low back issues, or I have this going on, or I did this surgery, or I had this. So I had a herniated disc. I don't want to do that. So, you know, you get a... a, a, and, And it sucks because I know a lot of that is perpetuated from our fucking medical system, dude. Oh, yeah. Is from somebody going and getting a surgery or somebody going in with chronic pain and the doctor telling you not to do these you types. You want to put safety tape. Yeah, there, there you go. Everything. No more doing basic like human movements. I fucking hate <laughs> yeah, that. That's yeah. why I wanted to the come out. The goal should be to be able to do those movements. Right. right. And, yeah. that, and that's how I feel about these two exercises is regardless of your goals, weight loss, muscle gain, athletic performance, doesn't matter what it is, if you cannot do a barbell squat or deadlift, then I I wouldn't even be following one of our programs to a T. I would be using tools from it, for example, like Prime Pro. Mm -hmm. I would be using it to and Prime to get to the point where I can perform a squat and deadlift. In fact, my regimen would be built around that would be okay my goal isn't i'm instead of what i my long-term goal is i want to lose 20 pounds right. of fat well, or add, what's the limiting factors right is it the ankle mobility is it uh you know your hips internal external rotation you know where where do the discrepancies lie and like what can we address to get you in to feel comfortable with these uh gross motor movements right the point is if you have chronic pain or you've got this disc issue you have all these things that are going on going on the squat and the deadlift, those are functional movements that the body should be capable of doing. So not doing them is not the best route. Now, me saying that, I'm also not telling you, oh, well, Adam said that, and even though I got a bulge disc, I'm going to go yeah. fucking squat with 200 pounds anyways. Right. I'm not recommending that either. No, the goal no. is to be able to do them, because let's break them down for a second. Forget that you're doing a barbell deadlift and a barbell squat, okay? What, we're, what you're really doing is you're working on your ability to lift something off the floor or hip hinge or and or your ability to squat down uh, in, in a squat position, mm-hmm. both of which are fundamental human movements, both of which, if you were not able to do either one of those, your quality of life would be considerably reduced just because daily life requires you know those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. So that's why they're so important. And that's why your goal is if you can't do them to correct imbalances and get yourself to a point to where you can do them. Now, that being said, That all being said, the question is, what are good substitutes? Fine. Okay. You can't really substitute, but if you're not going to do those movements, what I typically will do with someone, if I have a client who can't deadlift uh, because of pain or whatever, then I will have them do a single, I'll try and do a single leg toe touch, limited range of motion, depending on their back pain or whatever. And sometimes I'll give them a stick for balance. So single leg toe touch. Uh, You could do hip bridging on the floor, which helps a little bit with that. And if someone can't do a barbell squat, then split stance squatting movements are typically 
a second best option. A Bulgarian squ- split stand squat, which is more difficult. An easier version would be a lunge, and you can limit range of motion there, and you can hold on to something for balance. But you can do those kinds of movements and you know, not necessarily make up for the missed ones. But God, I hate, I hate even giving that advice because, like you said, it's such a funk. Both of them are so funk. Listen, if you take a shit or you pick things up yeah. off the ground, you should be deadlifting Everybody and squatting. Does. Yeah. Right. Sometimes it, I do both at the same time. Right. So if you're if you are if you are capable <laughs> of taking a shit, you if you are phone. capable of picking something up off the ground, oh, no. then learning to properly squat and deadlift is arguably one of the best things that you can possibly do. Now. In reality, a lot of people struggle with that. I and, and the reason why I speak so passionately about this is because I wish somebody would have yelled this at me. I wish somebody would have been in my face when I was 25 years old mm-hmm. doing leg press and leg extensions because my low back always hurt every time I did squats. Mm-hmm. I wish the motherfucker yeah. got on a radio show and said, don't do that to yourself. You're only hurting yourself long term. Right. Fuck all this other bullshit you're doing inside the gym. You're going to lose function. Right. Get to the bottom of why you cannot deadlift. And this is exactly why we build built prime and prime pro was because we know this we know this exists we know that it's more predominant than most people want to talk about and say it there's a ton of people that are avoiding these two movements and even there's if, whole there's gyms well, that don't even allow them right. right that's crazy to me and i mean if you think about it you you know you, you can if you need to regress and do it unloaded like you just you still need to like go through the mechanics of what both of these movements provide. Dude, the awesome part about it is normally the people that avoid it, it the two main reasons is because they have they they have goals that are aesthetic based so that I want to look a certain way. Yeah, they don't care. They're just like I just want to work my legs. Right. Yeah. And there's and the, and then they're afraid of the the aches or the pains. The reality is if they would just focus on figuring out why they have dysfunction, why they can't squat or why it hurts to squat or deadlift the, the effort put towards learning to squat and fixing the issues, they're going to get the benefits that they're looking for aesthetically. They're going to look Absolutely. so much better. Because, because squatting and deadlifting are such big bangs for your buck that thinking that you're going to go do leg press or split lunges or doing all these other exercises that we're talking about as, as a ex- uh, you know, uh, replacement to that, none of them are. Nothing is going well, to train your it's CNS. It's just that they're looking at the long term now instead of having these like sort of short term things that are driving them this is this is a process right you know and, and it's daunting for a lot of people to be like well i have to address like you know pain why can't i just like jump on and do some leg extension in the meantime so i get a nice pump out of my legs listen and- I, I mean i'm gonna have to regress everything where i'm coming from right now yeah. here i'm about to get i mean i'm just about to start my rehab process really soon here and i'll be body weight squatting and I'll probably be mechanically broken down a little bit because I've spent the last six to eight weeks with a fucking six inch heel on one side, right. not squatting, not yep. moving probably. Sexy. My body yeah, has now it has been overcompensating on one side. I, you better believe I'm going to go into a squat knowing that yeah. I'm going to be mechanically broken a bit. I'm probably going to go back to some default patterns that are not healthy or good for my body. And now it'll be work and it'll be boring. It'll be tedious. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, once you address it and you start working towards it, all these other benefits that most of these people are chasing will come along with that. And I feel so passionate about it because I was also like this. I was also yeah. somebody who avoided those movements. And I'm also somebody who just figured he had low chronic chronic back pain and it was just genetically my... And we are. I'm. If you look at my family, there's extreme lordosis in almost all of my uncles, aunts, grandma, grandpa, my mom. Like It's in our family. We have this excessive curve in comparison to everybody else. Like Naturally, I have that. So that doesn't mean I'm just fucked. But it does mean that I'm pre. I, I I have a predisposition to probably head in that direction, to where I'm going to have low back issues. And if I follow down the same path as my uncle, my mother, my grandmother, I'm going to end up having back surgery if I don't address it. So this is something that I have to put that extra work in to avoid that. And it reminds me every time I don't. Next question is from Jervin Dial. Where's the weirdest place you've gotten head? <laughs> Oh, so Doug great. was so hesitant on Adam, this where, where's the weirdest place uh, you've given head? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you know what this reminds me of? Oh, God. This was, so, do you guys ever watch the, uh, do you remember that that game show, the newlywed game? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great show. Great show. So, they don't have it anymore, do they? They do. Okay, so, back in the day, it was really popular, and it had these newlyweds, and they would ask them questions about each other, and some of them were oh, embarrassing. Uh, that was classic. And there's this one classic, classic uh, moment and it happened in like 1960 something. So it was like a, like during that period of time when 
everything was kind of like taboo on TV. Like, you know, you barely showed a husband and wife sleeping in the oh, same wait, bed. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Was this the one where it asked, y- yes. like, what's the most uncomfortable no. place you've had sex? No, no, no. He said, where's oh, the- I'll tell you right now. He asked- Let me finish. No, that's not what she said. That's yeah. not what the question was. I know where you're going. In the butt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what she- So the question was, where's the weirdest place you've made whoopee? Oh, Which yeah. means like, where's the weirdest place you've had sex? Right, right. right. And the girl goes in the butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was so you dying. both have heard that one. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god, so, I died when I heard that. Oh one. man, yeah. for me, I mean, uh, okay, um, movie theater, movie theater, probably. I know that's like cliche, but in real life, did you cut the hole in the uh, popcorn box? In, in the, no, <laughs> did you do the old school move, yeah. <laughs> like 1950s style. Yeah. Tim, she looks like she really wants that popcorn. Yeah, yeah. she's <laughs> hungry. Yeah. Why'd you, yeah. She's why, a hungry girl. Why are you biting the extra t- l- the extra large tub of popcorn? <laughs> this one needs more butter. Yeah. 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 No, it was a yeah, movie theater, and it's you know it sounds cliche. You see it in the movies, but here's the reality of doing shit in a movie theater. Were people right next to you? There's a lot of people in there. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, are you? Were you guys have your own like lane? to yourself no or? in the back uh mm-hmm. in the very back there were people in the theater but it was in the very back and uh i feel like you have something better than that i don't know i, I, I i've i, I can, don't know what's weird what else i mean what i've got a, weird I, I, something that comes to mind that i know was definitely uh because i the i can check off the the movie theater one also which mm. that was uh like we sat in the back and it was it was all right that wasn't like to, to me it wasn't as but you know scary. that's that's like that'll get you put like if you get yeah. caught doing that you'd be on a list right now the uh, the weirdest so it's a big deal I wonder if, yeah people still do that the I'm weirdest sure. i had i was it was a new year's party at my house i used to throw these epic new year's parties at my house and uh the, the night was winding down it was like midnight or one or so and um the house is i mean i've got tons of people in my small house i didn't have i only had a three bedroom two bath uh, condo and the place was loaded with people. So I've got people sleeping two on a couch and floor and all over all the rooms and multiple people in my bed. And so it's just like a shit show everywhere. And my best friend and I are are sleeping in my bed and Whoa. in comes oh, in, oh my bad. In comes <laughs> well we're not even sleeping. We're just kinda laying there, right? But we're 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 on my bed and in comes a couple girls and one of the girls, she comes up the bottom of the sheets and literally, and I had like basketball shorts on and she draws my shorts down and then she just goes to town yeah. and I'm like sitting up talking to my buddy at the same time. So we're, <laughs> this is all going on. Like him and I were mid conversation. Like, like don't, don't like skip a beat. Right. And we're just, we're having conversation and she kind of comes up the sheets and I'm like, what, I'm going to be cool about it. Like, she's not going to really do that. Like she's uh, not, she's uh, pulling, yeah, she's yeah, trying, yeah. I think she, what I think she she's thought doing. She thought you were going to stop her. Right. She, I think she thinks I'm going to get nervous and freak out and pull my shorts back up and oh god like that uh, but I'm, I'm being uh-huh, cool and i'm talking uh-huh. to my boy and i'm talking to him and i'm like uh yeah and i'm like oh she's, like, she's doing this right we're gonna do this right now and then sure as shit uh, right in front of my my boys did she go the whole yeah, distance yeah yeah the whole way. while you're with wow. your buddy yeah yeah so you, that, you that was weird. i did i did wow. while you're talking to your buddy yeah that what was, did you say to your buddy well i didn't say that's much awkward did you look at him in the eyes and everything no. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you that's, <laughs> what, <laughs> that's no. what i'm thinking no yeah. like if i was sitting next to justin i'd be like i can't finish Bro, uh, yeah. like, I don't know if it you was know, like his face just all of a sudden you're, yeah man that's a, a great story hey listen tomorrow yeah. when we go back to work we need to get 50 leads we need to get all these clients <laughs> 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 yeah I'd be like how do you do that I don't know if it was more weird I starts twitching I uh, went through uh, with it and I didn't stop her or it's more weird than my buddy stayed there because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like if it was the other way he around knew, like left. he saw oh like, yeah oh, of course it was yeah. weird it's my, uh, we're no, sitting on top very... of we're not on we have a sheet kind of over us and we're on the bed and we're kind of sitting oh. up Oh my God. You know, and that, she, yeah, went in there. And so, that's oh, funny, 100%, man. he was fully aware of what was going on. I think if the shoe was on the other foot in this case, or the mouth was on the other dick here, I would have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's correct that. I yeah. would have I would have looked at my buddy and exited the room and been like, yeah, uh, see, I see you're busy. But yeah. I, think, <laughs> I think he was so surprised that it was going down that he wanted to watch and see if He's this was like, really wow. going to happen. She's, right? really so, going she's down. a champion. Yeah, I would I would say that that was probably when the first well, one you, you said. When you said weird, yeah, I think yeah, that. You win. Because mine sounds a lot like a, a like a porn. You know the Whoa. way that this went down, but it, it was like do tell no, but but my roommate didn't know that it was going on, so it was more like we had a we had a dorm room that uh, I mean no girls were allowed in the dorms, and so I had oh not your rule that's the rule of the school no it was the rule of the school okay, I and thought so, you guys were like like a clubhouse yeah, like, no no girls yeah, no girls allowed like we're, we're, we're like, like twenty some years yeah. old yeah no uh, so I 
I went out with this girl and then, you know, I snuck her in, you know, past the RA and then we got into the room and, um, you know, started messing around and stuff. And then I heard my roommate come back and it's not like he would have been a, a dick or anything and like, you know, told on me or anything to the RA, but like, I just, I was just like, Oh no, I was like, hide. Cause um, you know, I didn't want to cause a, any, mm. any attention. And so she's like hiding underneath this desk and I started talking to my roommate, this and that. And, and so she just pulled my pants while you're talking, down to your while buddy? I'm talking to my buddy. And yeah. And then she started messing. And she thought it was so funny looking up at me and stuff. And I was like, I was kind of freaking out and like, like frozen, you know, and my, my roommate was asking me all these questions and then <laughs> he finally left and uh yeah we 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 finished up but yeah it was like <laughs> it was so awkward i no i i, I didn't I, I i didn't know what to do i i i wasn't about to to finish i public, don't know how you finish yeah dude. public sex is weird no it's i maybe because i had practice i had another situation <laughs> that happened to me before oh, that okay i had another one where we were uh on a party bus where we had a bunch of call girls with us and uh, i had two of them on my m- the back seat with me and they just thought they would just go to town on me right there in front of everybody and it's just weird you know it's it's and i think when you're a young when you're a young man <laughs> you're just going to gloss over that no well it's just, I feel, <laughs> it's just weird you yeah. know well this weird weird stuff yeah. well it's okay so i and i and i tell young men that like think about these types of stories right that have never had this happen i, I tell think them, they're a lot cooler in your head absolutely yes. and that's where i'm heading with this is that uh, when you talk about threesomes public uh, sex like that crazy things it sounds when you're a young teenage boy, it sounds so fucking cool. And, and I then think when you're put on the spot, right? Well, yeah. it, it, what it is is it's just a lot of times, like you, when you go to the threesome thing, or you talk about what, what we're talking about right now, like it, it's more awkward and uncomfortable than it really was, like you know, best orgasm of my life, right? And it's more of a cool story. Yeah, to it's tell. more of a story and memorable right. than anything else. Yeah. And and so once you've done that enough times and you've kind of got through that, you realize like this is kind of stupid because. There's no real connection here between these girls. I don't really, I, it's not even a good orgasm. It's halfway weird and awkward. Like, this isn't as cool as the, everybody makes it out to be. Yes. Yeah, you know, so. I, so I've seen some crazy stuff. Like, I was at a. Uh, oh, I like how you do that. Yeah. It was, right. uh, I, I mean, so I'm asking, for a, I'm asking for a friend a of mine. A friend of mine did this. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy, yeah, guys. So, no, I was at a, uh, God, who was performing? It was, uh, it wasn't a rave, but it was that kind of music. And I went with, at the time, I was married, so I went with my wife, and we were in there, and she didn't want to be there. And I was like, this is great. And so we're having a, you know, dancing, whatever, having a good time, and it's super packed. And then there were like bleachers on the sides, because it was, I forgot where it was at, but you could actually go up and sit in the bleachers. And I look, and it's, there's a lot of kids there. I'm obviously way too old to be at one of these things. And there are these fucking kids. They're probably 18, 19 years old. I don't know. And, and they're just hanging around talking to each other and the loud music's loud and there was a girl sitting on her boyfriend and her skirt is hiked up and she's <laughs> clearly <laughs> pretending like she's not having sex but she is I think they were really drunk or oh, on man. something and so I walk by them and I look and I'm like are, like is she and I told my wife I'm like are they and she's like oh my god she's having sex with them but they're trying to act like they're not that was one of the weirdest things and I also saw on an airplane here's another one I was on a plane and uh, it was a, a long flight, and there was a guy and a girl, and the uh, like, kind of across from me diagonally, so I can kind of see him. And he had a blanket over his lap, and sh- she had her hands under the blanket. And then, very so slowly, you would see the blanket rise and go down. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, she was giving him. The, I saw that in a park. She was giving him the slowest banging. hand job of all time. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, like, man. they're going to be there forever. You better speed it up. <laughs> this plane flight's going to land in four hours. You don't have that much time. <laughs> oh my god! I walked. I, I remember walking like it was at nighttime, and I was walking up through this trail to get to one of my friends' house, and it was like. It was. It went through this like kind of Christian campground, and there was like uh, this spot that kind of looked over everything. And so I was like walking on my way up through there, and I heard like bear noises. I was like, "What the fuck?" It was like, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> and I was like, "What is this? Like, this is crazy." And I I, I slowly kind of came forward, and, and I heard like you know the girls like noise that it started to cut, and it's like ah. <laughs> rawr, rawr. like the guy was like audibly making so much more noise and i could i could just see this this like pile just like moving and contracting and isn't there, it was isn't pretty there, funny isn't there like unsaid man code that you're not supposed to be louder than your partner isn't that what isn't there unsaid? that's what i thought i'm I, like why I, is this guy like, like making I'm, so much noise I, I mean, I'm, all, I'm, I'm pro noise i'm all so pro I. i'm pro talking pro yeah. noise i'm pro all that yeah. but I, I like to communicate but i don't 
I, I, I like I her to be. Weird I like her to be louder. Like yeah. I don't want. I don't want to be. I don't want. I don't want to be talking more and louder than you are. And I don't. I think most girls don't want that either. I think that's kind of weird when. They well, got, I think it's like, weird. Oh, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, you like that? Oh my god! That's, <laughs> yeah, that's uncomfortable. Yeah. Stop it. I almost feel like. Uh, it, I hate. I don't like it when it's too like it's fake. This is you, know? you know what? This is a great. Like, this is, yeah, this is daddy, our dude, typical yeah, forum. Bang, bang. Like, oh our typical yeah, yeah. forum poll. I'm sure someone will start a good poll on here. Like, how auditory do you like? Your partner to there be both male and female. It'd be talking dirty and that's how right. awkward that can get. You yeah. can find that on the forum this yeah. week. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's that's the place forum to do post. it. Hey, check it out. Uh, Thirty days of coaching. I haven't talked about it for a while. It's free and it's available at mindpumpmedia.com. Also, don't forget to go to our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. There's new videos going up all the time, and it's totally different content than what you hear here on the podcast. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>